morning, everybody. It is Friday, January 28th, 2024, and we are coming to you live this morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Woo. Good to see the lovely Carmen in the studio with us. Hi. Hi. I mean, you could have slutted it up for the day. Uh, something. Oh, yeah, come on, Spanish. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> you guys always talk about how cold it is in here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's true. freezing. It's, it's yeah. back to being cold. It yeah. was a uh, hot box oh, for a while, yeah. and now it's back to being cold. <laughs> My wife thinks she's tricky. When she comes in the bedroom, I see her go over to the thermostat and mm. adjust it to 70. Not cool. No, if, as soon as she gets in bed, I go on the app, and I'm like, <laughs> right. No idea. First off, ladies don't know how to use a thermostat, nope. so they shouldn't be. Easy. Yeah. No, yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. First I, off, I, it's I opposite in our boxes. house. <laughs> What'd you say? You know, the station, I have one of those lock boxes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, no, it's opposite in our house. I put it down, and Chad will turn the heat on oh, when huh. I'm not home. He has no hair. I know, but still, he'll turn the heat on when i'm not home when he takes a shower or something and then he'll like forget to turn it off mm. oh and you I, walk into a steam i go uh, on a uh, rampage uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be yeah. sweating while i'm eating yeah. uh, <laughs> it gets pretty it gets pretty brutal that really tarkov though. stuff is a yeah. lot of work <laughs> <laughs> always tarkov um uh, but i gotta tell you i went through my phase i keep trying to play call of duty and i'm like eh. Oh, I just got uh, well, uh, Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, it's just in time for me to quit. That's no, all right. I've been playing the zombies. It's pretty awesome. And every once in a while, I'll get on. I'll be like, I got nothing going on for a couple of minutes. I'll get, oh, I love my wife. goes, we're going to leave in five minutes. I go, okay. And I go and fire up the game. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, what do you I go, you're five minutes to you. Got a half hour. I got three games to play before we leave. <laughs> so I uh, I played and I was like, eh, I, just, it's, I think I'm getting too old. Uh, I got to tell you, Chad is going to get me. I like playing League of Legends. Oh. I jump in when he has to go to the bathroom. But, uh -huh. but the games, like, they take, like, 30 to 35 minutes. I'm like, I can't do that, but I can, like, help you when you're cooking and stuff. And I just like to click and then see the little. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, League of Legends is the one that all the hot girls play. Yeah. Every, every yeah. girl I know. You don't oh. have to do anything, so it's a perfect yeah. um, Twitch. Well, it's a perfect Twitch stream. Uh, for, right. You know what I mean? Um, Carmen, today is the day that. I'm excited about it's that. It's been 12 years coming. No, no, no. Oh. Not even that. Not what? even that. <laughs> I wish I was. Uh, <laughs> today, I will roll over from 43 to 44 on Pokemon level level. Whoa. Stop. How do you do it? It's uh, your cheating machine. I did not use the machine that Pokemon sells to help you. <laughs> um, I, uh, I I have I'm on. I have forty thousand more points, which I can get. Yeah, in that's today. yeah, yeah. That's just catching. <sighs> pop an egg. You, I thought you had to walk and stuff. To... Who says oh, I'm not walking, Joe? Uh, Who oh, says I'm not walking? Who says you, he's not driving slowly? In if you truck? drive your car five miles an hour, oh. it will count as walking. Because yeah. <laughs> when I was playing it, you had to like walk around the neighborhood yeah. and the mall and stuff to if rack you, up the points. If you're driving over, I want to say once you hit like six or seven miles an hour, it will ask you, "Are you a passenger?" You right. novices really think you know the game, don't you? <laughs> so let me ask you this: If you had the game on and you're not necessarily doing anything, like catching it, have you just carried it with you while you're walking around do you get points for that or no yeah if you're walking yeah, yeah. oh give me yeah that's... i'm doing at least five miles a day oh, man so yeah oh yeah i can rack it up for you you'll but be at 43 in no time carmen <laughs> but you're not really getting anything if you're walking you, you still need to catch you still and need to fight catch things, and, yeah. and spin oh like well that's what i that was my first question. but it will yeah. give you the it will calculate all the time you, all the times you walk with your buddy because you get walking bonuses at the end of the week it will add up your total mm -hmm. and if you hit uh like 50 Which I do kilometers get, you know. is by the way i like to point out i'm running yes. but also i'm probably yeah. not doing over five miles per hour yeah. i'm jogging I'm going. <laughs> where do nice you drive so slow to, to rack up? <laughs> like, i don't I parking don't. lots <laughs> yeah no i don't ever get the i mean like I, once a week i'll get a walking motor yeah. store, but i don't know uh, i don't get that like Whatever. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to explain it to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost a 43. Uh, can't yeah. bring me down. Um, <laughs> what happened to you? I hit the volume. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Both of us were uh, I thought he was going to die. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that caught me by surprise. Good morning. Hey. So think about that as torture. Like, because oh. they would do that. They would put headphones on and you'd crank the volume up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm feeling torture my people. jaw. Yeah. You were going to tell them anything after a while. Oh, dude. I'll tell them everything right do you now. Yeah. You don't yeah. gotta torture me. Yeah. Carmen, all I would have to do is put headphones on you, crank it up for like four seconds with Slayer, and then put food in front of you. And you go, you get it? If you tell us, you'd be yeah. like, all right. All right. <laughs> no problem. I, I would 100 be the worst. I, I opened up my um, middle console the other day to get something on. I reached my hand in and I went, 
ah and i pulled out and it was a pencil in there a sharp pencil <laughs> And I could see a piece of lead oh. in my finger, and I was like, "This is. I should go to the hospital. <laughs> this is the worst. It's lead." And oh. my, my wife is like, "Okay, when we get home, you just soak it. It'll come right out." Like, you don't understand. It's under oh. the skin, and it hurts so bad. And I was like, "I would tell you anything you wanted to know if you just hurt my fingers a little bit." I'd be like, well, I wear a dress once, uh, but the worst part was is that there wasn't even lead in my skin. I just drew on my finger. <laughs> I went, I guess, and I licked it. I licked it, and I rubbed it, and I was like, "Oh, it just went away." Yeah. So I wrote on my hello, uh, hello. I wrote on my finger and almost no. cried. Oh, sorry, Michael. Oh, anyway, welcome to the program today. We got an incredibly packed show, which means uh, something's happening every minute of the day. We got T.J. Miller from uh, Deadpool and from uh, what's the name? Silicon of Silicon Valley. Yeah. Well, who? What? What? Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. What did you say? Oh, Transformer. Yeah, he was in a lot of things. But I love him. He's a great guest, been on the show a bunch of times. They're very funny. Jane Yang, um, he'll be here. And ex please explain the peanut butter thing to me. So it never came in. So we were ah. expecting it. Yeah, Carmen checked yeah. yesterday before she left, and it never came he in. He was sending us in. peanut butter that he makes. I, I don't know if he... Like he owns the company. I think he has got a piece of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and um, But yeah, it never came in. So I wish I had... I only have my GIF today. Don't, so show it. Don't show him your peanut butter. I won't. I won't let him. I'll tell him. Is he going to be like Rob Snyder and talk about, like, Rob Snyder was almost crying when he was talking about <laughs> making almond milk. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So it's his TJ's Choice peanut butter, and he's got a bunch of different flavors. <laughs> I feel like there's drugs in it. Probably. Yeah. I Probably. feel like somebody went to him and said, TJ, we're making a new rum, and we want to use you as a thing. And he's like, yeah, everybody's uh. doing liquor and stuff can i do like something i don't know peanut butter or yeah. something i love peanut butter and right burritos, like, yeah there's no way he just <laughs> he doesn't have a peanut farm you know there, <laughs> but he may love peanut butter and realize that the, the unhealthy peanut it's butter that you buy at the store let me try to make my own peanut butter but why tj miller right because he may love peanut yeah. i know tj but... pj tpj uh, right? pa tj <laughs> Peanut butter? No, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, <laughs> no. Peanut butter. <laughs> they say the best thing to invest in an event is something you know about. So he yeah. may just be right. But what a peanut farmer. I, but what I'm saying is, you don't look at T.J. Miller and go, "I hope he has something I can eat." <laughs> you know what I mean, like not, nothing bad against it. It's just it's yeah. just a yeah. weird thing. Like if it's a doctor or if it's some fitness person or human biologist, you go, okay, well, this guy knows the body. I don't know. I feel like he likes snacks. Yeah. Oh, I feel yeah. like he's a, like, he, I don't know that he stoner. does drugs, but I feel like yeah. he's a stoner. Yeah. yeah. But if you had like a thin, uh, 60 some year old lady on the cover of your pizza box, you'd go, what? Yeah, true. What I told Papa on? John that I said to Papa John, I go, you, you want to do a good, uh, pizza commercial, get a fat Italian New Yorker on there. So that they could say, now look, hey, oh, I also used to eat my mama's a pizza, <laughs> but I like a Papa John. You know what I mean? Like, be because I was eating Papa John's for a while, and it went, when I lived in uh, Atlanta Lakes, and it was the closest thing over there, and I was like, this isn't bad. It's mm -hmm. not the same, but it's not it's not bad. So pizza. that's a great endorsement, Papa John. It's not bad. Yeah. It, it was close by. Yeah. 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 I love when people go. I'm going to New York for the first time. What's the best pizza in New York? I go, Any pizza restaurant you walk into. <laughs> I, I mean, they have all these Ray's famous pizzas around New York. Nobody knows who Ray is. He's not really famous. It's kind of like yeah, a chain. Yeah, because there's famous Ray's. There's original famous Ray's. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a, different... Any of the pizza places you walk in New York are going to be served to you by an Indian guy. And <laughs> most of the time, they're all fine. I don't, I, you know, you want to drive to Brooklyn and go to that one place that everybody loves. That's fine, too. But it's when I went to Italy, everybody's like, you have to eat the pizza and you have to have the gelato. And they taste exactly like they do here. The yeah. pizza there was sloppy and. I, I, I gotta tell you, it. everybody says the uh, New Haven pizza. Remember when we did the yeah, uh, report? Did, yeah. They say that that's like the uh, best. Yeah, Portnoy, all the top uh, stores right. are from New Haven. Yeah, what's Far that? Connecticut? Yeah, yeah. 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 Farva went out there specifically to get that pizza, and he said it was unbelievable. Oh, it, no. And the thing with uh, Portnoy is, I think I like the same style he likes because he likes it well done. He likes it really thin, yeah. you know, no and not flop. a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, not a lot of crazy stuff on it, you know. You give me good just thin cheese pizza. Agreed. That's yeah, where it's agreed. at. Now we all want sauce. pizza. This is the uh, yeah. yeah. Melting gonna, pizza. Yeah, we're going to yeah, get cheese later. It's <laughs> pretty are. close. Melting Pot Social, which is downtown, is coming in today. And uh, Carmen and I, I've been dangling a date at <laughs> Melting Pot with Carmen for 12 years. And I just felt like it's us being out. Happening. in a Well, you know, I felt like the two of us at a restaurant drinking. You never know what could happen. <laughs> it would just be inappropriate. Yeah. I'd so, put my hand in the cheese for sure. For sure. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, the best is when we thought it would be fun to take uh, Juliana. 
<laughs> when she was little. And then the, and when you yeah, go to the melting pot, they give you those long st- spears yeah. so you can stick. The, yeah, I've never really thought about a <laughs> child just stabbing me with the spear. Yeah, it wasn't even her. She did it too. It was me. Uh, she yeah. got me. Oh. Which I brought some stuff today to dip in the cheese. <laughs> what? What did you bring? <laughs> that oh is a gosh. true. Yeah. You have a problem. How are you not 300 pounds? <laughs> It's hard. It's yeah. it's, it's wow. very hard. Wawa Carmen, here I come. <laughs> well, so because I still want to try and maintain uh, my macros today. So just if they only bring bread, like I can't just eat that. Right. And my new favorite snack is pickles and you cheese. Dip a pickle and cheese. Well, Ooh. so I actually put cheese on a pan and I crisp it up and then I roll my pickle in it and it makes like a pickle blanket cheese. Wrap. <laughs> keep, keep talking. Yeah. Keep talking. Yeah. yeah. Pickle blanket. Yeah, and then you do like a little like spicy mayo or Ooh. some ranch or some, you know what I mean? I usually, yeah, but. Carmen, have you ever had pickle pinwheels? Yes, I have, yeah, but I don't eat ham anymore, so oh. I do turkey. turkey. Yeah. Right. So pin, good. Yeah, so good. So I brought pickles, and then I also found these olives that looked interesting, mm-hmm. and I got some anchovy stuffed olives oh my gosh. that yes. I thought yes. would sound delicious that in, does sound yes, delicious. It in does. cheese, like salty on salty on cheesy. Okay. So I got us pickles and olives. I got. You I brought my donuts so I could dunk my donuts and cheese. Okay. Thanks. You are so <laughs> mentally fat. <laughs> so you're a mental fat. So uh, <laughs> it, it's hard. It really is. How you can eat all that and still do a handstand, I have no oh, idea. Well, 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 um, strong. <laughs> and what did you do? Did you shave your head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been shaved. I shaved a couple of days ago. Right, I shaved my date. Yeah. You look bad. Oh, no, thank you. it does no. No, 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 no. All right, hold on. Let me let me rephrase oh, that. Let me rephrase yeah. that. You look fine. Mm-hmm. I don't mean that you look ugly. I, I meant you look like, um, from what I'm used to seeing, you look sickly. Right, right, like, right. Thank right. God you're not. Yes, thank God I'm right. not. I so am I shouldn't have said you look bad. I, I like grave disease. So what is that? It's an autoimmune disorder. Right. My thyroid and my cl- my pores clog up, so I lost autoimmune. My oh, you have AIDS. Pretty much. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Spanish. Remember yesterday when we started off saying this isn't an insult? Right. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's not personal. Right. We're gonna redo it. We're gonna, well, we're I gonna should do it again. I, wrong choice Here's of words. A I shouldn't you have, look sickly. Yeah. I shouldn't have said you look bad. I didn't mean you look bad. I like your head. You look like down. you're about to die. Yeah. It's With better than when it was all puffy last week. You yeah. Look, yeah. That yeah, was ridiculous. Not good. Yeah. Did you finally get rid of the uh, chunk of hair on the side? <laughs> Uh, which one? The you had the little chunk of hair right here. No, that's my because I have stitches in there. No, I think it was like lower. I don't know. It looks like yeah, it's gone a, now though. Biopsy. Yeah. Well, I had to keep it because uh, my my stitches were still in from my uh, biopsy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it would have been better if you had stitches and a clump of hair. Well, no, no well, he had the stitches and then they shaved his head, but they couldn't get that part yeah. there, so the hair was longer because yeah. of the yeah. stitches. Yeah. Makes more sense. It's yes. been an interesting journey for sure. For sure. It ain't over. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Well, it's just the beginning, I feel like. Woo-hoo! Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Michael. <laughs> you see this uh, helicopter on Mars? Yeah. yeah. You know about this story? Well, I only know that it landed. That's so as they far have, as I got. They have the Mars rover had this helicopter that it uh, shoots out, and it was supposed to fly for two days, and it's been going on for years. And, and they uh, can't catch it? No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it, it, it goes, and then it stops, and then it has solar panels, so it recharges, and it goes again. But they didn't expect it to last more than a couple of days. And it's been uh, it's been like 500 days. I, I might be screwing the numbers up, but they really didn't expect it to last more than two flights. We used to live on Mars. Oh, and, yeah. And this thing even has it has an ability to land itself. And it survived a dust storm on Mars because it has the ability to blow the dust off itself. So it survived the dust storm. It survived another uh, thing that they had up there that was a problem. Uh, maybe it was a lightning thing. Yeah, or something, it got to be like lightning radiation storms. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they didn't expect it to make it through at all. And now it's still working, but it landed and it won't fly. So they can still see and they can still use it for experiments and stuff, but I, they can't move it. But they don't care because they're like, we've got 500 extra days out of this. Awesome. That we, Yeah. So, awesome. I mean, can you imagine? They're flying a helicopter on Mars cool. from here. I imagine whoever came up with the schematics for that thing gets a raise because they were like one day, 500 days right. promotion. But my other problem is, is that all the things that I can't do, like or all the things in my house that I feel like should be advanced in science. I'm like, they got a flying helicopter on Mars. Yeah. We should be able to do this. Yeah, well, it's they and I mean, uh, last year, they NASA came out and had a press conference and said, we have technology that's 300 years more advanced than what you know of today. 
Yeah, you know, well, I'd like to see more. I know, I know. Why so, do they hide um, that stuff? We pay for it. I know. We we pay what is I think it's like thirty million dollars a day goes to NASA. They have um naval ships that run off of hydrogen. It's purely hydrogen. They suck yeah. the water out of the ocean. They extract no. the hydrogen. Yeah, and it propels. And we don't have any of that. It's yeah, crazy. But, but did you see NASA's like car p- parking lot that they have? Oh uh, yeah, with all the cars from the sixties. Yeah, like yeah. the fifties and sixties. So there's no computer in them because you know that's the big thing that every car has a computer in it. So they're saying like they're just going to be able to shut our cars down. Right. Now, who's who's they and why? The government, so we can't leave yeah. because we're gonna <laughs> live in fifteen minute cities. And if you eat too much meat or if you eat too much cheese, you're not you canceled. Oh, no. yeah. You got yeah, no, you, you got, are screwed. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. Oh, I'm done. Yeah, you gotta go to the cockroach diet. You know what I mean? I can't wait till we have like uh, that movie where that just gives you fines. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Thing yeah. Just like Psh, Judge Chandra, Chandra Carmen, you have eaten too much cheese. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. You step off the sidewalk. You ro- you drive the wrong way or something like that. Well, oh, it's it, it, sooner. Like, it'll be you think the wrong thing yeah, yeah. it already is you, you post they, the wrong thing. the world economic forum had a whole video that they showed where it was you're being monitored at work and your boss has a computer a computer that monitors your heart rate and your thoughts so if you mm-hmm. spike they can call you in and be like you're having impure thoughts are you gonna get reprimanded and they just pull money out yeah. of your china account uses, yeah. china uses it for their students and it because it like collects data on how much they pay attention and how much they wander off and stuff like that and if they wander off then they get punished and but like most of them can pay attention for like 90 percent of the time that's and, why they're beating us yeah, yeah. why they're beating us the chinese <laughs> yeah i thought i was gonna say the other word <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah no, George it's, Orwell, 1984. Oh, exact it's way same worse. Thing. It's, it's a little way early. worse. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we'll be dead before all this. No, 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 you will not. No. Before we eating bugs. Yeah, no. Yeah. This is like the next five years. I think no we'll way. be too yeah. old to really get into it and care about it. Nah, not like, a chance. Ah, I got a couple years left anyway. You think, not you. You're not rich enough. Yeah. <laughs> the you only think one within here? five years. Oh yeah, they're already slow on you. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. They're already. They killed off tens of thousands of cows or they cows just died out of nowhere why you know? are they killing the cows so They're... bill gates could buy the farmland because he did i and, mean well, what, I mean, do we know what he wants with the farmland yeah, yeah because that way, yeah, yeah far, well that way farmers can't produce produce and yeah, other beef. beef and stuff like that and now we have to eat his lab grown meat and he has that um appeal, appeal company that has it sprays a it's a new type of insecticide that you can't get off once they spray it on there it forms it, a layer around the fruit that you're just you're eating that and no it, matter what yeah. and it makes the fruit last up for years and it's proven because they did tests in india and africa and it's killing people making them infertile can i just point out do yeah. you guys remember when the first break we would say funny stuff yeah yeah, yeah now, <laughs> now, now we're doomed people wake up and they got to be like jesus christ i'm no. dying i guess i'm dying yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so. listen nobody panic it's everything's gonna be fine don't i don't know worry. but this is also coming from a guy who ran out of his shoes and shaved his <laughs> yeah. and everything else so it's like you know yeah. I mean, maybe, look, maybe don't be so doomsday all the time. It's not doomsday. This is it's news. But I mean, <laughs> but it's and my it, thing is, it, like, yeah. I think these things can be avoided if we start waking up and paying attention. Oh, man, Carmen's running for office now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying we should like it is one of like, have you seen the um, farmers in France? that uh, were striking and they were like blowing the capitals and all their buildings with yeah. their uh, fire bombing them. Yeah. And then just dumping all their soil and sod and stuff in front of the gates. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying like they could, they show that the people can actually stand up for themselves where Americans are just now we're just basically all fat and defeated. We're like, oh, well, our government sucks. I guess we just live with it. By the way, that's no. the name of my new album, Fat and Defeated. <laughs> fat and that's defeated. Great. That's great. <laughs> You're welcome. You I would vote it. for you. I would totally vote for you. Thank you. We are fat and we're defeated. <laughs> vote for me. Yeah. We can nah. change that. I think uh, Chris Christie already tried that. Yeah, he, did. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, he did both. Did yeah. not work out well. He did not try the sad weirdo uh, ticket. Well, so maybe sad weirdo time. works. Yeah, sad weirdo. You it. went sad weirdo to going out with a hot chick. Yeah, yeah. Sad weirdo is way better than fat defeat. It's crazy. <laughs> when he announced he was running again, and Trump just brought the video of him fat at a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like, that is on. really bad. Come on, man. Can you imagine? Uh, like, uh, and then all the pictures in his shorts, his uh, weird uh, high waisted uh, shorts, the, the, the baseball, baseball. Yeah. pants. Trump with that picture. What are you doing? When, so last night I'm watching TV with my wife, and I got one leg up over the side of the you know thing, and nuts are probably hanging out. I'm just laying there, a little fat roll hanging on one side. Joey came in the in the house, 
and he had a friend with him. So I always, I always perk up and sit there and fix my shirt. And I'm like, I don't want to be all hanging out of my clothes when the kids come. You know, it's like embarrassing. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. you're lazy fat dad. But I always, I always <laughs> think about that. Um, like Chris Christie's kids when when Trump released that video. That's got to. If yeah. I was, but if that was my dad, I'd want to kill. I'd oh, want to yeah. kill Trump. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like you, you see how mad the Trump kids get yeah. when they attack Trump, but those guys are like, oh, he brings half. You see so. though, Chris Christie's like the only person that just directly attacks Trump yeah. publicly. He's it's like mad. Pers- yeah. it's personal. Personal, yeah. But also, well, like- R- Ramaswamy said the only reason Chris Christie's here is to get even with Donald Trump. Yeah. Pretty much. But also, like you see that video. Don't you like go immediately to your doctor and start taking Ozempic or like do something? I, like, don't you here, try Carmen, and listen, change your image? As a professional fat guy, <laughs> there are things you can do to eliminate the appearance that Chris Christie has. Right. He like I'm telling you right now, I should write a book. How uh, he how he was how he put on those white baseball pants oh. and tucked his shirt in <laughs> is beyond me. Like I I would have said, listen, I'm letting my shirt hang out because I'm I'm the, the mayor or governor or whatever it is. Give me uh, the black ones, yeah. not the white, white ones. Not yeah, I'm wearing slimming. shorts. Also, he has to have a uh, advisor Stylist. that goes, "Dude, you're killing yourself. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're. This is suicide if you tuck into those pants." Uh, uh, I imagine he's got no friends at that point because a friend was, like, "Hey, dude, yeah. you can't be doing this." Yeah. Or maybe he's like one of those people who's like, "Don't tell me nothing." Yeah. Yeah. Pete's the best, and so is Bobby. Both both those guys would tell me, like, if I put something on and I go, "This look good," Pete would go. Pete does the same thing. Pete would go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. I mean, you know, it, if it's a little. Sh- like and he'll go yeah 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 and then throw something in there like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you can kind of see your belly but it's cool you know, like, it's oh, cool. Yeah. All right. oh, okay so no it doesn't no it doesn't look good yeah. and Bobby would just look at me go look at you you look like an idiot you need those friends yeah, yeah. You told, yeah I'm telling you Dave McKay was a best friend he walked right up to me pulled a, a stray hair out of my forehead one time that's nice go, what are you what are we doing here and he goes you got a big hair stick under your forehead I goes no one told me and he goes and I pulled it out I go that's a good friend yeah. miss you Dave. Friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. Now I got all these straggly hairs. <laughs> uh, I talked to Bobby last night, and I called him yesterday. He didn't call me back. I sent him a text, a picture, a uh, text yesterday. He didn't answer. And then I called him in the afternoon. I said, "Did we break up?" And then an hour later, he called me, and he was like, "Hey, buddy." I go, "Don't try that. <laughs> don't make it like nothing happened." Yeah, he gets so mad at you for when yeah. you don't answer. I had to set. Oh, look at the TV. What, how ironic. Oh. monkeys <laughs> i had to one. send him a copy of my phone log to prove that i called him you didn't call me you didn't call me you didn't call me. i go you bobby have it's on, yeah. i have i'm like they have it on the phone and he goes send it send it okay and he's like dude i didn't know i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know what do you mean you didn't know yeah where are his know. receipts yeah right yeah, yeah that's yeah. what i'm saying yeah, yeah. you got your back mike mm-hmm. see them receipts Not you, so. oh sorry <laughs> yeah. a lot of the receipts going around lately <laughs> all right let me tell you what's going on today T.J. Miller will be here, peanut butter or not. He'll be in the studio with us. Uh, where is he going to be? Uh, I can tell you in one second. Funny bone. Uh, in yeah. Ebor. Good job, Gio. <laughs> Forget it. We already know Gio told us. Listen, I want to make sure. You make sure to yourself. I already know. All right, there you go. Then Gio you spoke know. with such confidence mm-hmm. as if he was prepared for the show. Yeah, yeah, all right. You would think yesterday, after all the the honesty and, and schooling we gave you, you would have gone above and beyond today. Well, he's actually at the improv. No, nope, it's called the funny oh, bone. They changed boy. it about three months ago. Nope, How TJ's... foolish. I didn't know that. They yeah. changed it to funny bone. Yep. All right, Since well, when? Everybody knows About that. three months ago. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> you missed it. Yeah. Oh, he tried to correct you and he was wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, no. Interesting. I'll say again. Funny bone. Funny bone. Yeah. Yeah. Which is where it's managed. Uh, it's in Ebor. Yeah. Yep. What it used to be. It used to be the improv. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Now you're just confusing people. Yeah. That, well, everybody, <laughs> I'm not confusing anybody. They're doing this. The improv uh, a couple of months ago changed his name to Funny Bone, which is the stupidest name ever, but uh, improv wasn't much better. You're just used to hearing it. So, well, I have to imagine that the, that you got bought out. Funny Bone bought out. I was going to say, yeah. is Funny Bone yeah. just like improv? Yeah, it's another chain. Like yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's happened. Uh, and TJ will be there uh, tonight. He'll be in the studio with us at 7 30, right in the middle of the news. We have a huge announcement to make. So huge that I'm not even saying anything about it. I'm mm-hmm. not going to give you any hints or anything. One hint. There, I did give one hint. Okay. All right. But that's it. No more hints. No don't more even say what it. it. Don't say no. what it was. If you missed it, you missed it. What was it? If you didn't get it, you didn't get it. Just whisper it to him. Yeah. No one he put hear. up a picture of fried cheese with a pickle in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, you know. That's the other thing. Uh, we've got Melting Pot Social coming in today to do some eating. And uh, we got a guy named uh, John... I gotta look at it when I say it so I get it right. John Sirisani. 
He is a guy that uh, at 37 years old retired, sold his insurance business and retired. And then instead of just living life as a fat cat, decided to uh, go out and be a serial entrepreneur. He teaches other people how to uh, invest. He's actually in town at the uh, Hard Rock, I believe, doing an event over there. And I reached out to him and he's just real interesting. I want to hear his story. I want to I want to talk to him. And you, you can, I invited him, so I don't know if he's going to be plugging anything, but you're, you're welcome to go follow him on social media. He's a very interesting guy. And he, if you're somebody who's stuck in a rut and hate your day-to-day job, he's a guy to listen to. So, uh, and of course he's from Chicago. So Pete knows him. I, I <laughs> doesn't know him, but he, Pete's like, oh, I played football for his father. Evidently his father was a great football coach. So anyway, uh, he'll be in here in the nine o'clock hour and, uh, the food Carmen is really where it's at. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what I'm thinking? Is my boy Dizzy back at the station? Yeah. Core four go getter. Oh, yeah. He's a go getter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, would you say you're more of a go getter than Spanish? Absolutely. You will. How fast that came in Spanish? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no hesitation. Yes, he my my, my my headphones are on. And Dizzy knew it was the funny bone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. Rename. Oh, dude, you know how great it would be if we if we had the punch out again because we could really stir up some mm-hmm. some real legit. Like we can say, hey, Spanish, you've been here a long time. Dizzy's been here a long time. One. Two men enter, one man leave. Oh, finally, yes. Yeah. I couldn't kill myself. Let's do it then in the ring. Oh, my God. Why? Right. You know, forget it. Oh. Bring it all down. My You're like the God. lady who just goes into the office and talks sexual harassment at work. Now we can't fire her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now we can't fire you. You're talking about HR. suicide. No, no, nah, nah, yeah. you can definitely fire me. If okay, you can fire. All right, see you later. <laughs> my video of my wife and her Stanley Cups has 48,000 views on Instagram. Yeah. Stanley, man. It has <laughs> 300,000 views on TikTok. TikTok is just blows things up. Yeah, you know, it's funny is uh, somebody had said, uh, oh, well, she got uh, whatever, 800,000 uh, views on TikTok. And I go, yeah, but that's not, I don't think that's a good. It's yeah. not, you know, because, yeah, they push it. Yeah. yeah. Joey would take when he was young, he would take celebrities and morph their faces together and put put it on yeah. TikTok, and he would get 250,000 views. Hmm. Yeah, I'm like, we, are we rich now? Yeah, right. well, what's going on? Are you <laughs> Charlie D'Amelio? Didn't yeah. Tony have a uh, video with his uh, dog? dog? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because TikTok, it's China's uh, social media thing. Right. So, Here we go. Well, I'm just saying they, they blow you up, so you get more addicted to it. Spare so you use it more. Yeah. So that's why the younger makes gener- it feel good. Yeah. So the younger generation really? is all about TikTok, whereas oldies were like, ah, I'm sorry, <laughs> we gotta earn it. <laughs> Make uh, multiple views. Yeah. Uh, what we, what what brought us to this conversation off the air? Uh, we were talking about I don't know I don't, I don't know, know how either. we got to the conversation. I don't know either, but pay attention to this because you're all gonna have to okay. answer. I don't know either, but I was talking about weirdos that you work with. Oh, and... you guys were talking about me when I was out no, of the maybe, maybe it stemmed from you were saying Dave McKay was good. Nice no. radio. Pe- now that's not where I came from. I don't know. No, I think I said, you know who's weird? And then you said, who's the weirdest yeah. person? We were. I said, save this for the air. Because, you know, we've all, Geo's worked at different stations. You have, I have. Oh, I know what it was. What? You were like. Don't you think it's so funny that we could just call someone a weirdo and they could be the most normal no, that person? Was after. That was that after was after too. Oh, I thought yeah. that's what. Yeah, no, that's right. It doesn't matter. Know. We're here now. Um, uh, but here's the thing: if you, if it's somebody who still works with us or is easily identifiable, let's use nicknames. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we we had a, a lady at work that they used to call uh, Edith Bunker, and she was the she was the she wasn't the weirdo one, but she. One time I, I just, I said, look, I, I'm not a big bragger, but I would think at least in the Cox Tampa building, if they were to build a Mount Rushmore, I'd be on that Mount Rushmore. Can we agree to that? Yeah. Okay. And this lady stopped me in the hallway and she's like, so you're Mike Calta, right? And I want, I wanted so badly to go, no, Fisher. Sorry. And walk away from her. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's the not the way you start a conversation. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, are you the one they call Mike Calta? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. It was her first day? No. Uh, no. Nah. That was she already <laughs> sold stuff yeah, on the show and exactly. all that. Edith Bunker. Uh, all right. Who's the weirdest person you ever worked with? Well, I, I don't want to say like the name, but uh, out of all the people, and there's been a lot of weird. Oh, that's what it was. I was saying about the uh, weirdo that I worked with uh, back in Fort Walt. Okay. That was right, how yeah, we yeah, started yeah. talking about it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this person does have a nickname, and they were litigious, too. Oh against i believe mike olivero oh man do you know who no. i'm talking about uh oh i can't i mean what, what? well i mean you should have left the litigious part out 
What is the nickname? Who's the bitchy McBitch face? Bold hug. What? Bold hug. Bulldog. Oh. Bulldog. Do you remember? I think so. Oh, here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Text, 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 text. Yeah, I think I do know. Hey, uh, what was the one? Uh, what was the one that you used to call Phoebe? Oh, the ghoul. That was yeah. the ghoul. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> ghoul. God, we go just talk to the ghoul in the hallway. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> One of my fondest memories from that time is I was talking to her and she walked away and Calvin came around the corner and he just goes, <laughs> <laughs> All right, there, I just sent it to you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, remember him? Yeah. Yes. That was the dodo guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 He worked yeah. here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, you're you're different. Oh, you're a different, different one? one. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. He was a board up. You're yeah. a different name. Different nickname. Well, no, but called him that too yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i called him insulin jim <laughs> oh, all right you should... mm-hmm. uh weirder that's weirder than the guy who had the uh, disney stuff the grown man with the disney stuff and the cookies and that was weird too ah, that was very the weird. jars was... of candy were super uncomfortable well it was always like come in my oh, office yeah. we need some candy oh, yeah no. you weren't interested in you yeah know. i don't know i don't no, know i wasn't that. here for him isn't it cool how many bobbleheads i own yeah and how many free tvs i can win Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. He would always well, win the thing. Every yeah. year. This is the segment where we talk about things you guys don't know about. Yeah. Like, I can say mine because I don't think it's offensive to call him weird. Okay. Like, I'll just say it outright. <laughs> but well, I would, I'm dying to hear it. By the way, it's always a compliment to call someone weird. <laughs> but again, like, I wouldn't call him weird. He's just, he's, he's not just, normal. Well, no, not, not normal. He's just very, like, hippie-ish, I guess. So it's different from me, so that would be no, weird. I already know who you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know who it is. Shark. Oh, oh yeah. He was, you know, oh, but yeah. he kind of, he never let, he was always. Shark would get my, uh, yeah. I, who do you think would <laughs> transition award? Yo, oh, 100%. Yeah. He also, yeah, he did not, he, there was no mean or angry on no. him. Yeah. He was just very go with the flow. Very yeah. zen. That's why I always used to call him zen yeah. shark. Yeah. So like I, I said, I wouldn't right. really call him weird, no. but because he's different from me, that's weird, you know. Yeah. I feel just... bad for shark because I would, you're right, he wouldn't get mad. He would just get uh, exhausted. Like I'd say, no, we're doing this, we're doing, he'd go, oh. <laughs> like I could just tell it drained him. It yeah, it drained him. He was like, I want to live in a tree. He doesn't want any <laughs> negativity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. TJ Miller's have to deal peanut with butter consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> all right. Let's uh, let's give some stuff away. Did you know we have to give away? Uh, yes, I do. Core four, baby. What are we? Core four go getters. Uh, <clears throat> third eye blind tickets. We have Steve Trevino, uh, Monster Jam, Pantera, Travis Scott, and Kona Big Wave Treasure Cove tickets. Yeah, nice. that's a pretty good lot, man. Huh. Happy right. tomorrow. Let's do it right now. A little bit of sparkle. Here we go. <laughs> Carmen is the keeper of sparkle. Pap Pap is your judge and scorekeeper. Carmen, what are we playing today? Okay, today we're going to play bands that peaked at number two. Can you name the bands or music artists that never had a number one hit when given their number two hit? Mm. Okay. All right, all right. I gotta scroll down. All right, here we go. Your first one, Ramblin' Man. Almond Brother. Mike. Well, Band. Yeah, yeah. yeah I Brothers just. Yeah. Well, What's on the paper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, it was you, Gio. <laughs> <laughs> You've made me so very happy. You've made me so very happy. I don't remember your song. I'm looking for life. the artist. That is <laughs> Katy Perry. It is not. Damn. Oh, that is. Um... I was looking Chicago. for. No. Oh. Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, gotcha. <sighs> Next. Back at one. Michael McBride. No, damn it. Ah! Oh, um, Brian Michael McKnight. McDonald. Yeah, yeah. Brian that's McKnight. it. Brian McDonald. I said Michael damn McBride. Damn it. Such a good time. Danny McBride. No. Because wasn't that a wasn't that a country song first, and then yes. he did it? Oh, I, think, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, that song. I think the other yeah. way around. Maybe yeah. Spanish gets one. Yep. Yes, yep. Correct. Proud Mary. I can Tina. Uh, Claren- Cl- CCR. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll look at that. Did you want to say Clarence Carter? <laughs> Clarence Carter. Yeah, I, I <laughs> <Right>? did. <laughs> Clarence Carter. Clarence Carter. All everybody wants to say. 
Creedence Clearwater <laughs> Revival. There yes, you go. Thank you. <laughs> Started out with Clarence Carter oh, Revival. Man. Okay, next. Don't it make my brown eyes blue? Oh. Crystal Gale. Yes, Mike. Love song. Paul McCartney Pestle. Wings. No. Oh, by the way, I got an update. Love Tiger emailed me at 5 o'clock this morning. There was another number one song in 1973. Oh, Selena Gomez. Nope. Justin Bieber. These are bands that peaked at number two. What's the oh. song? Love song. Yeah, and no, I already one guessed. One word. The Cure. Ah. Electric Avenue. Eddie Grant. Mike. Breathe. Band and artist that peaked at number two. The song is Breathe. Breaking Faith Vision. Hill. Faith Hill. Mike Helta. Ah. Dreamweaver. Oh, come on. I used to play it all the time when he was talking about his stupid dreams. Oh, uh, what was the name? Well, I don't want to give a hint because I know the first name. What? No. Nope. What is the first name? <laughs> nope. Dreamweaver. Kenny G. By Gary, Gary White. Gary yeah. ah, No point. Baker Street. Jerry Rapper. Jeff. Mike. Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Green Day. Geo and Pap Pap. We're halfway there. Geo, Galvin, and Spanish are all tied with one, and Michael is your leader right now. He's winning with five. Oh, all right. I'm coming back right now. All right. These Game are tables. bands and artists that peaked at number two. Your next one, right here, right now. <sighs> Jesus Jones. Yes, Mike. Sometimes you just gotta sing it. Man. And you know, let us finish the verse of it. Open arms. Journey. Mike. Louis Louis. Kingsman. Yes, Mike. How do I live? Leon Ryan. Jewel. Geo. I, I love that song. Great song. She's the best. She looks like a lizard. <laughs> she did. She got a Yeah. She oh, didn't man. age well, but she's got a Lynn Austin face. In her prime, oh, she was God. tight, yeah. tight. <laughs> It ain't over till it's over. Let me grab it. Mike. Work it. Britney Spears. No. RuPaul. Megan B. Stallion. No. Work it. You I don't work. Missy Elliott. Oh. oh. Flip it up and reverse it. Yeah. <laughs> Nights in white satin. Dire straits. Nope. Moody Blues. Moody Blues. Ah, Mike. come on. It came to me. <laughs> <laughs> Last kiss. Oh, what is that? Well, Seal? No. Pearl Jam remade yeah. it. Yeah. Pearl, Pearl Jam. Jam. Uh, oh. 99 Luff Balloons. Nina. Mike. You're still the one. Cheryl Crow? No. No. Shania Twain? Yes. Hey. Oh, I was going to say that. Come on, boys. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Ugh. Love it. I don't think I hate a, an artist more than Shania Twain. I what? love her. She's the best. No, she's not. Yes, oh, she is. She is. Icon. Yes. What do you think? You're Brad Pitt or something? Uh, yeah. I got to tell you, I watched her documentary and she looks completely different, but actually looks good. Yeah. 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 I mean, her body has not changed. No. Right. Yeah. She's tight. A little skinny right. thing. Tight. No, no. Just give up. <laughs> All I want to do. Joe Crow. Yes, Geo. Ah, uh, have some fun. We are family. Slide in the family stone. No. No, sister sledge. Sister oh, sledge. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and Pat Pat. Oh, We're oh. on the last three. Spanish has one single solitary point. Galvin doubling that with two. Geo. Oh. Having three, yeah. and Michael is your leader. He's winning with 13. That's, oh, anyone's game. That can't there be right. we go. <laughs> All right. Bands and artists that peaked at number two. Last three. Here we go. She's not there. She's not there. The zombies. Yes, Mike Alta. Yeah. Everybody have fun tonight. Wang Chung. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everybody. And your last one, Born to be Wild. Oh, um, Steppenwolf. Yeah. Galvin. Steppenwolf. Not cool. Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. You guys want the last the extra? Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not, right? 
Word of 10 points. <laughs> Y-M-C-A-G-O. Yeah, we know why you got That's it. That's right. That's right. Hey, Vito over there. What? It's a joke. That's right. He's yeah. always dressed like the Indian under his clothes. <laughs> no, I was the, uh, the construction worker. Oh, right. <laughs> Hot. Ew. Is that yeah. two in a row? Uh, uh, no, I won yesterday. That is too correct. Right. Your final score, Spanish with a single point. Gio with three, plus the last one. Galvin with four. <laughs> Galvin four. with four. And Michael is your winner today. He won with 14. Wow. I'm trying to take away my fourth point. It was outside the game now. It's true. Oh, an extra. It was yeah, a that was point. the extra. You know why it's I didn't do card. very well in that? I only like number ones. True. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I like sense. take a big number two. <laughs> you will do that after all the cheese today. <laughs> oh, you won't do that I after all the cheese. Yeah, it'll be a couple weeks. A long weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've talked about this before. Oh, no. Please don't. Oh, no, please do it. No, Metamucil. Why? Who, what's the famous person that takes it? T Tony Danza. And he's like five, five still, looks right? Like he's looking like he's 50, he's 80 years old. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Well, I saw a commercial and I was like, I, maybe I should start taking that. Yeah. I don't know why. I think <laughs> my wife took it. Because it's also not that Tony Danza works out every day of his <laughs> right. life, eats no, properly. He, he a, says it's a metamucil. It's I know, I know, but I'm saying Carmen's looking for all these right. uh, just He's magic right. pill. <laughs> hey, what do you do? I, I saw, I saw this really, like, really attractive girl. She was in great shape, and she was driving a Honda Civic. So I bought a Honda Civic. Yeah, it should oh. be. Uh, yeah, is it working yet? Yeah. Is it working yet? Listen, I go to the gym and I eat healthy. Mm. I just saw a commercial, and I remember we were talking <laughs> about a famous celebrity that took it and said good things about it. And then I was like, How old are you now? 32. Just give it up. Though. It yeah, it's, it's over. It's no. Pull the ripcord. Turn yeah. the corner. Listen, no, I still got gray boobies. And gray boobies? Great. Oh, oh, great. oh, they had great. like hair. With a T. No, great. Doctor. I still got great yeah. boobies. And until do you, though? I do. Show. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. Yeah. Would it kill you? Would it kill you just whip them out once? Listen, oh. I'm not wearing a supportive bra right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Let's, let's, let them play. Bra or what? Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can see yeah. it. would be easier to chill. Your nips are flying. <laughs> yeah. Already, yeah. Well, You're golden here. Healthy. All right. <laughs> is that you, a sign of health? <laughs> it, it is. is. Uh, if you're not going to show feeling. them, is it okay if I put a picture up on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. No. Oh, I would never. <laughs> Delete those pictures. Yeah, no, no. I don't <laughs> Carmen, I have the worst picture of you. I'm I don't sure know. I have do. one that's pretty no, bad, too. I have the worst Let's picture. Let's not do this, of please. Yeah. I have pictures of you, of parts of your body you can't see on your own. Oh. <laughs> I can. I'm very flexible. Well, and there's mirrors. Prove it. <laughs> what do you have? What? Oh, I, I've seen a couple of good ones. I, my, my, oh, I took my favorite one. Of, of her? The, yeah. My favorite one that I have of her is when it was the first birthday party you had at the Hard Rock. And Carmen and I were doing shots. And at one point, I lost her. And the next time I saw her, some guy had his arm around her, and she was eating a chicken wing. <laughs> yeah. And somebody took the chicken wing away from her so she could take the photo. And she's going like this. <laughs> I know what picture you're talking about. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And, and accurate. Uh... Accurate emotion by me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't take, take a chicken, chicken, yeah, don't take yeah. A chicken yeah. wing from a drunk no. girl. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'll never forget the first time I ever saw Carmen eat was when we went to uh, <laughs> Sarasota. We were at, um, it was a St. Patrick's thing with Crazy Eye Tommy. And uh, we ordered food afterwards. And I saw Carmen unhinge her jaw <laughs> and eat a whole sandwich like like uh, yeah. Scooby-Doo eats a Dagwood. You got to get a bite of everything. Can yeah, I, I mean, show... you went like this. <laughs> Ate the whole stuff. Can I show the group this picture? Yeah, oh, of course. It is a picture uh, when Carmen had a huge zit on her forehead. Oh, <laughs> my God. No, no oh. yeah, but it gets better. It's rude. Just as I was about to take the picture, she went like this. Oh, I, I, I know that. I already know the picture. Yeah, me too. Oh. I can see from the corner that my eye yeah. taking the picture. Hot or not? <laughs> oh, I just sent it to you guys. You no, Geo, that. I, I, I just asked you. Yeah. I said, show oh, it from your phone. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Show it from your phone. Don't send it to my <laughs> trust this jerk oh, picture. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. Jerk. I just can I put that on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. I literally just asked you yeah. if I could send it to the group. No, you said, can I show the group? Listen, Showing I'm... and sending two Ooh. different things. Yeah. 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 That is the largest zip. I've ever seen. Anthony, you better talk to her about her third eye. Yeah, yeah. send it back. 
<laughs> Delete it, Geo, now. He put it on an Instagram. I, I don't know nothing. Not. Can I post it on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. How, how am I the bad guy? <laughs> Listen, I'm not like, hey, can I have some sexy pictures for Instagram? I'm like, can I get the big zip? Yeah, picture? can I get the worst picture yeah. of you? Listen, but you want to know what they say? Your acne is correlated to what's happening on in your life, yeah. and your forehead is stressful. So yeah. it's, that is because of you. Oh, me. oh yeah. it looks like Chad hit you with a golf ball. Yeah. Range. <laughs> that was like and 10 years ago, Gio. Yeah, that was so a long time ago. That was, that was forever Don't, ago. No, you can't see it to make I, it better. You can't, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Don't, worry about that. Don't I, stand I, in front of somebody when they're teeing off. Oh. <laughs> I was actually saying it was a long time ago because I've held on to that for so long. Uh, I'm putting two of up there. Oh, because I oh. any of the ones that you have up there. What? No, <laughs> the, the one that Galvin just sent me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. All the only pictures I have of you that are that are nudie pictures are when you got your tattoo, and I would never yeah. do that. Would you weren't supposed to have those anyway? No, I'm I didn't sorry. take. Them. Oh, she's looking at Joe. What? No, it was Tuttle. No, definitely Spanish. not me. Tuttle wasn't there. Oh. It was <laughs> one of these idiots, was... and I have specifically said no one was supposed to be back there. So just so you know, you're not supposed to have those pictures. I will sue you. Oh. See, yeah. right. Joe. Jeez, it was definitely it's... not me. Huh? What? This is the closest. Yeah, never mm-hmm. trusting. You. I've apologized. This is a. No, yeah. I apologized yeah. for it years ago. Fakest person don't, in the room. Wow. Don't be re mad. I'm now excited. Rob is coming back. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes. Carmen, oh, we're not doing that. Do you we're not want doing me to today? send you the picture of Spanish in the bathroom mirror with his hair all crazy and no clothes on? <laughs> I can send you that one. <laughs> Might as well. I have that. I have yeah, that. Yeah. If I'm standing there just staring in the mirror with his afro and his and his pube fro at the yeah, same time. Yeah, from my chest pubes down them. All right, Carmen, I just posted it. It says it's oh, the closest man. thing Carmen will ever have to a baby. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to check in with Galvin. He has today's news. And now. News with Galvin on the Mike Calter Show. Geo, Starbucks do something different to their ice. Oh, it's they the got pellet. Ti- tiny pellet ice. Yeah, that one in Collier's been like it for a while. It sucks. Every time I go to drink it, they shoot down my throat, and I feel like I'm going <laughs> to choke to death. Yeah, I don't like it. Not all the Starbucks <laughs> have done that, but the Collier one, for whatever reason, they have. Oh, I still go there. Oh, I yeah. like it. All right, fix it. Yeah, oh. hospitalized. It's, yeah, hospitalized. Yeah. Exactly. What I love this. it. Yeah. Like, like the so- yeah, the Sonic yeah. ice. That's uh, the ice they have at Sonic. Yeah. Hey, uh, I want to remind everybody that tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m., is kegs and eggs at yeah. McDittons. Uh, are you excited? Have you seen the uh, Mike Cal the show beads? I have. Yeah, they They're so awesome. Yeah. You see the big ones? Yeah. Oh, you got wow. those. Oh. That's great. You How many the- of those do they have? I don't that's, know. That's got to be like something special. I right? don't know. Uh, Carmen, you're really going to have to show your boobs again. Okay. <laughs> no, it's going to be hard with, in my top, but. You have them. Uh, Spanish has them. They got the Mike Helta show logo beads. They got the uh, head beads, and they'll be out there uh, at McDinton's starting at 9 a.m. Get there early. Get a, a neutral on the house. You get breakfast for free while it lasts, and there's no cover till 11 o'clock. There'll be a DJ out there live. It's the big pre party for Gatsby. And then. Uh, from there, you can win tickets for the Kona uh, Big Wave area where that, that they have actually over there in the parade route. So it'll be your last chance to win. And Spanish and Carmen will be out there starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Do Whoa. you know who did the uh, pirate version of you who did that picture? I did it. That's, oh, you really did it great. with the uh, app thing? I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. AI? Yeah. Sexy yeah. pirate. Right? It is, yeah. I'm excited. I went shopping yesterday for my outfit. I got to oh. do some, like, sewing and get a little creative. Sewing? Cutting. Oh, God. Cutting, well, I want like, to be let, able to reuse it because it it's out really and... cute. No, oh. to make it shorter. Oh, I meant to show sexy yeah, stuff. You know My what? Yeah, you're just a, a jerk. Yeah. I'm projecting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. No, uh, yeah, you guys got uh, you got a sexy outfit. Spanish got a sexy outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> I do. What? Well, I could be sexy too as a pirate. These guys nice will be Mike say that. out there at McDinton <laughs> starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Then Mike Olivero is broadcasting live from 9 to 1. Go out there and have a good time. I was I was gung-ho to go two weeks ago, but I knew as it got closer, I'd be like, there's no way I'm going. So at least I was smart enough this time to be like, yeah. I'm not. I'm you not went too. trips, Michael. You went from gung-ho to gung no. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I would go to Gasparilla is if Bert called me and was like, Hey, you want to come on the float? And then I'd be like, even though I really don't want to go, I feel like I'd have fun with Bert. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. But, I, but and if that you're on a float, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also, everybody, just 
rideshare, Uber, whatever, get yeah. get dropped off. Oh, yeah. Just don't, you know what I mean? Just don't drink and drive. Don't drive. Mm. Period. The end. Don't yeah. drive. I'm trying to open up parking for us. Don't That's why drive. I can't hang out with you guys because uh, I'm going to be Ubering yeah. tomorrow. Oh, okay. I would love making to all that, that money. Uh, I would love to just drive around. I got you. I'll drop uh, you off here. I'll drop you off downtown. Uh, you want to go to McDonald's? I got you. One ride. Get out. Yeah. That's a good point. All right. What do we have in news, Calvin? Uh, today's news is brought to you by Pelt Shoes. Pelt has a new goals, new sold sweepstakes going on. It's getting close to the end of the month. They're doing it all for January. They're giving away 10 pairs of shoes every week, every week all month long. So you got to get in there. Sign up. For the uh, new goals, new souls, sweepstakes, no purchase necessary. You can go to the six locations throughout Pinellas, Sarasota, and Fort Myers. Win yourself some free shoes while you're in there. Look around. Uh, by the way, Carmen, I see you got the ultras on. Yeah. Thank you. Ultras I are where it's at. Love these. Yeah. I have a lot of people uh, message me about that. What is the name of that shoe? It's Ultra with an A. Yeah. They have them at the Pelts. Check it out. Pelt shoes. Get them at Pelts. Uh, the We talked about this yesterday. The Alabama uh, guy uh, got executed. They executed the convicted murderer with nitrogen gas, Ooh. putting him to the death uh, first of its kind method that was once again placed in the U.S. at the uh, forefront of the debate over capital punishment. The state said that the method would be humane, but critics called it cruel and experimental. Uh, officials say that Eugene uh, Kenneth Eugene Smith, 58, was pronounced dead at 825 p.m., in an Alabama prison after breathing pure nitrogen gas through a face mask to cause oxygen deprivation. So uh, that doesn't sound too bad. Right, I, oxygen deprivation? But but you're all nitrous up like when you're in the dentist's office. And, yeah, or am still, I thinking of the wrong? So you're just like loopy? No, that's, that's, that's what I imagine. Nitrous oxide. Is that what this, this is? This is nitrogen. Would it be similar to like carbon monoxide poisoning i, I don't the know same effect well because i heard carbon monoxide poisoning is actually incredibly painful oh really yeah because yeah. forever well because you tighten yeah. everything right. like tightens everything up contracts. right before you die yeah <laughs> but also you don't realize it until it's too late yeah 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 i don't know I, I we don't know how none of us know how it feels because you die afterwards so you don't know if the um because they say like like timothy mcveigh turned and looked at the people as he was getting the um the injections and you know, the, I I have to know that the old Sparky hurts like oh yeah. god, dude. So here is what it says. I just uh, put in uh, Google what happens if you breathe nitrogen. It says inhalation of nitrogen gas uh, rapidly empties the body of life, and a person <laughs> would know they are dying from the inside out. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So no. Well, you know, okay, so are, not the same as the dentist. Office. Yeah, yeah. The, the family of the people that this guy murdered are probably good. Yeah. Right, I hope it hurts. Right, it's all it's all cruel until you realize it was your kid that was killed. Yeah, then yeah. you're like, no, nope, I couldn't do it. And I have to tell you, I don't know why they just don't do this, like the fentanyl or heroin. Just yeah, we talked about that. Give them a little extra. Boop, boop. Yeah. What is it? The propofol or whatever. Yeah, propofol. that's good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I got propofol. Yeah, it, then, it, but that I don't. know. I mean, I don't know how much you have to give somebody to knock them out. It, may, it could take them hours to die if you mm. did it that way i got knocked out earlier this week and it was awesome i love it from Wait, what? what from uh, he's fighting kids in the parking lot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no when they put you out put you to sleep it's the best feeling yeah oh, i don't like it oh it's no? so cool i try to i, I looked at her, i'm like i'm gonna try and fight this she's like you're gonna lose yeah, yeah. and that was it so come back from 10 10 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh when i had my hernia thing and the guy came in and he was like hey, i'm the anesthesiologist i'm gonna give it to you and you're gonna count backwards and you'll just feel he goes you're not gonna get knocked out but you just won't feel anything and it'll feel great i was like Okay. Uh, and I looked at him like, oh, you're so handsome. <laughs> he goes, yeah. Yeah, 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 he was a really good looking guy. The Have last time it happened to me, I started crying. Oh, before they, they poured, yeah, it was just like one, like one tear oh. in each eye that like slow roll. And the nurse was like, it's okay. I'll hold your hand. Like, Thank oh. you. Oh. And then I just went to bed to sleep. Uh, <laughs> it was fine. But. There's 1% of the world's population that anesthesia doesn't work on. Yeah. And they don't know it until they're in surgery there's this oh. wild story of a guy well, who you know before surgery no you don't well why so your body so the way the anesthesia work oh. yes he was paralyzed conscious. but conscious the whole time so his eyes were they had to tape his eyes shut because i think it was like open heart surgery uh -oh. and he said when he woke up he had felt everything oh, God. Yeah. No. yeah and he couldn't do a damn thing about tough, it darkness though. imprisoning me yeah. oh. <laughs> absolute horror isn't that a twilight zone episode too where that i think it might be yeah yeah so uh, uh, a 26 year old woman in mississippi was arrested for child neglect after she was caught taking her son to walmart in freezing temperatures 
and he was only wearing a diaper. Uh, Not hot. Yeah, she even dropped a, a bag of frozen food on his leg. Oh, I, listen, you should have to have a license. You yes. should have to have a license to have kids. It's even that, it would be. I, I see people with kids in Walmart, uh, and they just they let them do whatever they want to do. Like they let them lick stuff, and yeah. like they're over there and they're licking counters. And uh, I, and then the other thing is, I, I can't. Sometimes it's it's absolutely unavoidable. But the people who drag their kids to the stores at midnight, I, oh, I never yeah. understand that. No. Yeah. Or the ones that sit on the side of the road with them. like yeah. That, you know? yeah. uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, scenes ever is from Due Date with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Whenever he punches that kid in the stomach, <laughs> the kid's flipping his tie and doing all that stuff, and he just hits him and he holds him down. <laughs> He's like, there you go. That's yeah, <laughs> that, that movie's so great. It, it really is. is. That's so a good. I feel like that, sure. yeah, that, that, that flew under the radar. There's yeah. not a lot of people that know about it. Because <laughs> it's Robert Downey Jr., Zach Galifianakis, Jamie Foxx. Yeah, it's really Really but Zach Galifianakis makes him apologize. <laughs> and he's like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> Due date is the name That's of it. so good. Uh, Valentine's is coming up February, uh, February 14th. Ooh, Spanish. Who are you going to have your, for your Valentine? Ooh. I think we know. Oh, 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 he's he's in in love. It's going to be Carmen. Uh, uh, Reese's pink peanut butter hearts are back for Valentine's Day. I don't like it. And people, well, you're not going to like it, Carmen. People on social media are having a field day. Because when you turn the heart upside down and it's pink, <laughs> it looks a lot like something else. <laughs> yeah. It's the, uh, it's the best. Hey, look yes, at my, right. look at my uh, happy Valentine's Day. Yep. Here's a sack oh, for you. That could be multiple things. I, I'm glad I looked first because I was going to be like, I did that. Yeah. Said yeah. Pink. I didn't know. If no. you eat it, you should hold it above yeah. your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, enjoy some of those. Actually, it's a pretty good thing to get a girl and be like, you like this? Yeah. 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 You show it to her yeah. and then you turn it upside down yeah. slowly. And hold it for her. And if she goes for it, you're like, I'm in. Oh. <laughs> great. Will you marry me? Uh, the Cal Cal the Carolina Panthers have hired Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator Dave Canales. Is nobody else coach. Call him, nobody else called him Davy Candles. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, I'm Super pretty sure. I wrote, check. I wrote, uh, I wrote uh, Dave, Dave Canales. <laughs> and it changed it to Candles. And I didn't see it. Oh. I was letting it rip, and I was like, "Who's Dave Candles?" I'm like, <laughs> don't know. Davy Candles. <laughs> Davy Candles. Oh, Davy Candles. Uh, so terms of the deal were not announced, but uh, sources told ESPN's Adam Scheffner uh, that uh, the contract is for six years. Oh. The Panthers hope that Canales, 42 years old, can do for Bryce Young what he did for quarterbacks Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield. So is that going to be a big blow for uh, uh, this? Yeah. Is, this is very bad. Yeah, yeah, this is not good, but it's not. Uh, listen, how much of Canales was was uh, Baker Mayfield was Canales though. Well, Mike Evans had his best year of his career this year, and he said that Canales came up with routes that he'd never run before in his ever. Oh wow! Oh, and really? That's why yeah. he was attributed the success to him. Uh, so uh, I, Mike, sorry, sorry, uh, Gavin, Mike, your guess is on the line. All right, I told okay. you we'd have a huge announcement uh, coming up today at seven thirty, and the Go Getter Geo Core Four. <laughs> uh, let's welcome the Grand Wizard of the Gasparilla Parade this weekend. This is our friend Bert Kreischer. Bert, how are you, buddy? Hi. Oh, I'm pretty hungover. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> what did you do last night? Uh, we did a five and a half hour Rogan. Oh, and then, five and a half geez. hours? Yeah, it was insane. I mean, like, it was one of those Rogans where you cry a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> where you cry a couple times? I cried a couple times. <laughs> who, who was on? It was me, Ari, and Tom. Oh wow! That's yeah, it was pretty epic. And then we went to his. We went and had the best steak I've ever had in my life. And then we went to his club. And then I came home and I had another steak. And I woke up and my <laughs> tongue felt like a finger. I it was so dry in my mouth. Uh, well, as you know, Bert is the uh, Grand Wizard of the uh, Gasparilla Parade this weekend. <clears throat> How great of a feeling is that? <laughs> you okay? You gonna make it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to lube up my body real quick. <laughs> How many Gasparillas did you go to as a kid? Every year? Oh, every one. Yeah. Yeah, every one. I mean, my favorite one was senior year in high school. That was when, like, it really meant something. That was when that song, Roll It Up. You remember that song? That was really big that year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you, and, you, and you and who? Weecho? I don't know. I'm trying to remember all your friends' names. Oh, Weecho, Troy Kent, Ty Kent, uh, 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 the whole uh, look, the whole sport, Jesuit baseball team. I mean, it was like chaos. You'd go to the end of the island to start out day drinking, and then you'd come down and go to the uh, down by Palmasia, like or or down by uh by the yacht club, and there would be a party there at the end of the night. I remember one night we got we brought tasers, <laughs> and uh, 
just walk through Gasparilla with tasers. We were real cool kids. <laughs> uh, well, Bert will be it's on. Epic. It's epic to know that I'm coming to be in Gasparilla. It's insane. Like, not, I, not to I'm, be in it, it is, to be the Grand Marshal. I mean, like the biggest prize that there is. I never thought in a million years this would happen. In a million years. Yeah. This is if yeah, and, and you know, you, you know, I, I mean, I have like, a, you know, I signed like a deal at Netflix, right? I do know that, yes. And so, so they, they were like, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I, I, I was going to no, say, you, you talk, you I'm talk. sorry, I'm sorry, it's a little delay. Uh, so yeah, Bert has got a deal on Netflix, and um, I had hyped that we had a special announcement coming up today. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut, and I'm gonna let you make it. No, I, I want you to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it together. Okay. Do you want me to make it because you don't know the details? <laughs> ah, you know me so well. <laughs> I don't know the date. I don't say the theater right. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen. Is, is it Christian McCaffrey? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Christian McCaffrey theater. All right, I got it. You want me to go through it all? Hold on. I got I to gotta pull up it all now. Uh, there, I'll, I I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'm very pleased to announce, ladies and gentlemen, please take it from here, Cal. <laughs> On Saturday, July 6th, at the Mahaffey Theater in downtown St. Petersburg, our friend, the very funny Bert Kreischer, will be filming his next Netflix special at the Mahaffey Theater. Two shows, tickets go on sale, I think, Monday. Uh, I have tickets to give away, which I will do here after we're done talking. And, uh, Bert, you are coming here to your home, back to Tampa, back to St. Pete, back to the area. You're going to be the Grand Wizard of the Parade, and then you're going to be doing your next Netflix special <laughs> from here. <laughs> Everything but the Grand Wizard part. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much better to I say Grand Wizard. Marshall, Grand Wizard is a clan member. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more fun to say Grand Wizard than it is Grand Marshall. It's not it a is, clan member. It it's is. the clan leader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I had to do when I did uh, when I did the Amelie. I had to make sure that I didn't do any of the material that I was working on because I didn't want anyone to see it in Tampa because I knew I was shooting my special here. I knew I was doing a deal. I'm doing a two special deal with Netflix. And they were like, they were like, you know, razzle dazzled it pretty good. So they were like, Hey, can we get another special in like six months? Ooh. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> I was like, that's a really quick turnaround. And they're like, can you do it? And I was like, absolutely. But I, I mean, that's why I'm working every single night, every single night I'm doing four shows a night. I'm like cramming because I want to make sure it's good. And they were like, where do you want to do it? And I've saved Tampa. I've saved Tampa. It's like when you plan a tour, they you you always save one city where you're gonna you know you want to shoot the special. I did that for for Philly. I did that for Cleveland. I did that for Omaha. And this tour, I was like, oh, this times out perfect. I go, I won't blow any of this material in, in Amelie, and I'll save it for this special. So I'm so pumped to come home and do the special here. I'm I'm so excited. I mean, I, I'm gonna tell you, Bert. I'm gonna be honest with you. No one's been more honest with you than me. I told you about the first hour. And, uh, and, but I'm telling you that night at, at Amelie arena was one of the most fun nights. All the comedians were great. The atmosphere, the big, uh, Bert stuffed Bert that was running around the, uh, the, um, mascot Bert, the DJ yeah. and all, all the comedians were funny. You killed it. I mean, I, I really had a great, like, you know, there's a part of you that, uh, that's worried about coming to your hometown and given what people expect, you know, and yeah, I think it was above and beyond and then going a afterwards having like the most Tampa green room afterwards with Wade Boggs and Mike Allstott. I'm like, it was just such a fun night, man. It really was. I'm looking forward to this one. I can't wait. I can't wait. I literally can't wait. It's, uh, I, I maybe, I, I kind of feel bad that I still have to do another special after this. Cause I'm like, this is the special. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, because it's Tampa, I'm working so much harder than I've ever worked. Legit. I swear to God, I'm doing spots and I never did this. I never did this. I'm doing spots Tuesday, Wednesday at the store, doing four spots a night. Last night, I did three spots at Rogan's Club. I did four spots the other night. I did a call and stick to work show. Like, I'm grinding harder than I ever have. Yeah. And uh, and it's because of Tampa. Well, I'm so excited for you. Yeah, because now, you know, it's like, 
there's a certain uh, feeling you have. You're coming home. You're doing it for the home. Then you got your family. You got your friends. You got you know. You want this to be the biggest one. Bert, I had a, a cool experience for you. I was in a restaurant bar watching the playoffs last week, and a girl, like 24 year old hot server girl there, she was telling her friend. She goes, uh, "We're going to Gatsby." Uh, Bert Kreischer, that really funny comedian that takes his shirt off, he's gonna be the grand marshal. And I was like, I know him. It's I wizard. Him. I didn't say anything, but it was it was so cool. <laughs> To hear somebody talk about you like that. That, I, man, that's like, that's the greatest in the world. Like, no, I, I, I know that, like, I know that you're not supposed to, like, like fame or whatever. Oh, yeah. I know that that's, like, not sexy, but I love it. I think it's so <laughs> cool. Yeah. I, I'll know. I think it's so awesome that someone would know who you are. Or, like, or like I love, like, when my mom goes to Publix, and then sometimes they'll go, Kreischer, do you uh, know that comedian? I, that uh, makes me so happy. Sure. Hey, if you really want to feel happy, um, every time somebody has a business opportunity or needs you to do something, <laughs> they all come to me as if I'm coming to you and pitching you ideas. <laughs> well, Cal, I got a couple business ideas I'm bringing your way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take yours. It's just so funny. Is oh. Everybody's like... Uh, everybody's like um hey my uh sister's graduation they need somebody to speak at it and they want birth to do it i'm like yeah you you're out of your goddamn mind i'm like i barely call the guy i'm not calling him to tell him about your sister's graduation um well you know you know the funny thing about gasparilla is that it's my i mean i'm just i mean this for real but it's my buddies the guy that helped me name my my junk in seventh grade <laughs> you needed I mean, help like, to for name real. Your junk? you couldn't just look at yep. it on your own Good gardener, man. He's uh, he's uh, he's big in the Gasparilla scene, you know. And yeah. and uh, it, when when I was in seventh grade, I was nervous to shower. And uh, and Good Gardner and Thompson Rankins uh, said to me, "Hey, man, you can wear boxers if you're nervous." And I was like, "What?" And they're like, "If you don't want to get naked, you can just wear boxers in the shower." It was like so surreal to talk about because he's the one that organized all of this. But he was like, yeah, man, we're boxers. And so I went in in seventh grade and boxers in the shower at Berkeley. And, uh, and Truett and Thompson were like, you know, one of the things that make you more comfortable, you can name your, your, your junk. <laughs> and I was like, what? And they're like, give it a name. And then maybe you'll feel more comfortable being naked. They were trying to, like, let me be okay being, like, a boy because I was nervous. And so they're like, give it a name. And so I was like, uh, John Henry? <laughs> and they're like, that's a good name. <laughs> so... So it's surreal that he's one of the guys that reached out to me about doing Gasparilla. And my wife gets an official call, like from Gasparilla, from Truett Garner. And then, and then I, he goes, that name sounds familiar. I go, yeah, he gave me, he helped me name my <laughs> oh, I feel like that's the same story that uh, all the Jerry Sandusky stories start out with. You can wear boxers in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> we just want you to be comfortable. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, I'll tell you, this is really good. I, I feel bad because, uh, you know, this would be cool, but I don't think we're going to, we're not going to see you. You're going to be in the in the parade. Uh, Carmen in Spanish will be starting at 9 a.m. at McDitton's. They'll be pre-gaming out there. Uh, and then who knows what happens afterwards. Do you have plans for after the parade? Dude, I have. <laughs> I have lined up so many plans. You have no idea. I have. I've committed to a bunch of Buccaneers. I want to party with these guys. There's a girl that's going through cancer. I've hit her up. I want to party with her. And then there's this dude, Cal, that Isla and I are obsessed with. He collects megalodon shark teeth in the rivers in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I follow him. I follow him too. Yeah. And he's like, "Bro, I can get you a megalodon." And so I'm like, "I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm DMing with him, like where I'm scoring clean coke." Like, <laughs> I, he got attacked by an alligator. You know that? Dude? I saw. I saw the video, dude. He, we listened to his podcast on survival stories, Isla and I, and then I followed him and he DM'd me and Isla has, Isla goes, finally you paid off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, I'm waiting for my kids to, to give me that, my son to, well, I, I kind of pay off my daughter with Taylor Swift, but I have not paid off my son yet, I don't think. Like, he's got a lot of good experiences. But there'll be one where he's like, "All right, this was the one that made it. That made it." Bro, cool. how about how about Jason Kelsey being the first dude in the orgy to take his pants down for me? Because <laughs> that guy takes his shirt off. Taylor Swift likes it. She's gonna love my stand up now. Uh, like, who who knows that she doesn't? You know what I mean? 
Uh, we've talked so aggressively about her that if we meet her, it'll be uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? I have a scenario. I have a scenario that I I I don't know when I said this, but I was like Tom. I said, "What if? What would you want to happen if you meet Taylor Swift?" And he was like, "I don't know. Just like, hey man, I like your stuff." And I was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "What about you?" I was like, "I wanted to grab my hand, look me in the eyes, and go, let's run away." <laughs> 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 and, and then we start running out of the arena together. And, and then when the Kelsey brothers and I, when we started trashing the Kelsey brothers and they reached out, we said our moms would fight it, their mom. <laughs> he, they, they, <laughs> Tom's like, you know, we're probably going to meet Taylor Swift. He goes, let's pray to God. You never heard your scenario. <laughs> let's run away. Oh, that whole thing between you two and the uh, Kelsey brothers is, is great, man. That's endless opportunity <laughs> there. Dude, I love when I love when athletes have a sense of humor. Christian McCaffrey, I was with him at the Super Bowl last year, and I was drunk, as, just super drunk. And I said, twenty thousand dollars for me to catch you." <laughs> <laughs> I go, "Do you think I can catch you if you give me ten minutes in this room? Do you think I can catch you?" He's like, "You mean like hold me down and take me to the ground?" I said, "Yeah." And he leans in real close. He goes, "Buddy." There's dudes that get paid eighty million dollars in train all year that can't catch me. <laughs> uh, who's been the uh, Who's been the one person that is a fan of yours that you never expected? Uh, that's a good one. I, I've gotten I've gotten a couple. Oh, I, the best one, the best one, best one, best one ever. <laughs> I got a FaceTime and I answer it, and it's Bradley Cooper. Shut oh. up. I swear to God. And he was like, he, he was like, I just watched Razzle Dazzle. And he's like, your honesty as an artist, your vulnerability is insane. Like he goes, I'm, I'm curious where it comes from. Like, how do you write the way you write? And it was a, the best, it caught me off guard. I walked into Leanne's office. She was in a conference call or whatever for Birdie Boy. And I walked in. I was like, I got to introduce you to my wife. It was like, you know, I'd never do it cool. Right. Like, and then Bradley Cooper was so uncomfortable. He's like, hold on, let me put the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I thought I was just FaceTiming you. And then, and then Leanne yelled at me. Like, I go, Leanne, she goes, I'm in a meeting. <laughs> and I was like, it's Bradley Cooper. You want to dial that back a bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bradley Cooper is Bradley Cooper is probably the biggest, the biggest one. Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg, when I ran into him in Vegas. We were doing the Netflix as a cup. It's before I tackled the protester. Right. And uh, he goes, uh, he said, my favorite action star. And I went, for real? He goes, Bobby, I loved your movie. And I was, uh, I was, I don't know if he was being honest, but whatever. The fact that he knew you had a movie is great. So I bullied him online aggressively. Uh. <laughs> That's my favorite. That Mark Wahlberg is the fact that he knows who I am. Snoop is my, Snoop's the, the white whale, like yeah. for lack of better words, he's the being friends with Snoop is crazy. I remember he, I called him one time, and uh, he called me the mf'er. He said, "You are the mf'er," wow. and I said, "Really?" And he goes, "Man, I just got high and watched the cabin." He was like, "How do I get on that show?" I was like, oh. "Snoop, <laughs> I was like, Snoop, we can greenlight a second season right now." <laughs> Uh, what, so what is next? You do the uh, special? Do you have any? Do you do in the cabin? Like, what else are you working on? Cal, you're not supposed to talk about these things. I'll tell you how my life looks. All, right. All I know is I'm about to get on a private jet yeah, in right. about an hour and fly into my hometown to be the grand marshal of a parade I grew up going to. A group of people I thought I would be lucky enough to be in this parade. I, my life is better than I could ever imagine it. I'm staying at the Hard Rock Casino. Probably shouldn't have said that. Oh, no, yeah. That was, that was probably not smart. But, and I'm going to Council Oak tonight to, have, tonight to have dinner. I am the luckiest dude in the world. I've got the special planned. I've got this tour. goes until It goes until May. The special's in July. We do fully loaded after the special. And then I am taking nine months off. Nine? Yeah, you'll never make it. I I can't imagine. I been, I just bought a tour bus. You don't think I'm gonna use it? Like I'm I I uh, I'm gonna take time off and uh, and live a life and uh, and then do spots at the store and try to write a new hour. But like and then I have another special due in like 2026 or 2025. And so uh, I'm gonna I, I have a I'm not supposed to also say this. I'm, also say this. No, I, I, I'm, I'm breaking this timeline down right now. I'm writing it all down. Well, listen, uh, I'm very proud of you. I'm so happy you got uh, you got the big special we announced today. It's going to be taping July 6th here 
at the Mahaffey Theater in St. Petersburg. You'll have uh, Bert will be here taping two shows for his Netflix special. You get to be there. You get to see it as it happens. And uh, I'm I'm real happy for you, Bert. I I'm I you know I know that you're uh, hopefully we'll get to hang out one day. I know you're all over the place, but it would be nice to get to see you at some point. I buddy. Out of all the people I just mentioned, Bradley Cooper's new Mark Wahlberg, my relationship with you has been the longest one I've had in this business for real. The dude I was working with that night, I still I do not talk to. Uh-huh. I did not know Tom yet. You were the first person to ever think I was funny. And you know that. You know for a fact you're the first person to ever think I was funny. You called me. I have no related, radio relationships. Everyone I met was after you. You are my touchstone. You are the, you are the dude who gave me the confidence. I remember we, I was taking Leanne to the dentist uh-huh. when you called me and I was, and I just started dating Leanne. I mean, I know you as long as I know my wife. Yep, yep, that's so funny. Yeah, dude. I, and I have never been more proud to watch your career grow. And I see how it's weird. How I see how jealous people get as you blow up and I have nothing but love and, uh, and happiness for you and for your, you know, I was thinking about the moment the other day, which is a little personal, but uh, I'm going to say it anyway, is uh, after the movie premiere, the moment that I saw from a distance of just you and your dad sharing that hug together and knowing that, that, you know, that's all you wanted is for your dad to know, you know what I mean? And that, and if it finally came around, that was great. Not to mention the fact that I got to sit next to Christy Mack and it made my day. <laughs> and then I saw her reading the book at the pool the next day. I go, you read? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I don't know how long you're going to be in town for, but if you get a minute to breathe, hit me up. I'll be around. And uh, if not, I will definitely uh, talk to you. But I will see you on July 6th. Now, uh, uh, July 6th, I should have some sort of role. Should I, can I announce it or something, ladies and gentlemen? You know that one one of those things. Yeah. You want to do? You want to do? You want to do the? Uh, we we what's that? Yeah. Leanne just said it. She's in the bathroom. You want to do Voice of God for my special? Yeah. 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 One hundred percent. I usually have Tony Hernandez do it, who grew up in Tampa, grew up in South Tampa, went to plant. He's a big movie producer now, and he produces all my specials. I had Leanne do it for Shane Torres. I would love for you to do Voice of God for my special. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Bert Kreischer. Oh, by the way, Shane Torres, great special. Uh, we've had him on the show uh, to talk about that recently, and uh, I know that's a Leanne Kreischer production. Yeah, that Leanne produced that. Everyone check it out on YouTube. I'm I'm really proud of the special. It looks beautiful. And I have to say this. My wife produced that soup to nuts, top to bottom, hoof to snout. It is her production and it looks amazing. Yeah, and he's a real funny comedian. I love that. I one of the things about the comedy world is uh, as hard as it is to compete in it, I love the way the comics help each other out and uh and you know, you see a guy like Shane and he you give him that that little bit of a bird kiss and that can mean a lot to him, man. He he'll he'll blow up and now. Uh, well, good. Uh, I love it. It's great to uh, talk to you and enjoy your weekend. Really live it up for uh, for Gasparilla. And if you get a chance while he's drunk, whisper in Baker Mayfield's ear that he should come on the show. Let him know that we're his friend. Uh, l- listen, I got his phone number. He I FaceTimed know. me. on. Uh, he FaceTimed me. He caught me off guard. I was making eggs and bacon. And I was like, the dude with the great badonk? <laughs> hey, his what? ass is impressive, man. His oh. ass. And his hands, uh-huh. he's got big hands. Like he, that dude is. The, I'm I'm so excited that he, we get him next year. Oh yeah, it, it's been it's been great. It's great. It was a great season to watch. How is it that famous people, when they just become at a certain level of fame, they all everybody's phone numbers just go in your phone? Like, how did Bradley Cooper get your phone number? Uh, my agent. Oh, he had to make some phone calls. He made an, He made a call to my agent and was like, and I think they ran it through my team and they're like, is it cool if they give Bert his phone number? And, and then he just FaceTime me and I never answer FaceTimes. I didn't, I didn't want to answer a Baker's number. I didn't recognize. Uh-huh. And I was like, it's a voicemail. And my assistant was like, you should answer that. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he had his camera out. And I was like, Oh, is it? And I thought, I, I thought it might be one of you guys. No. Oh. Cause it's same, same area code. And I was like, Hello, St. Petersburg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Enjoy your weekend. The Grand Marshal of the Gaspilla Parade. And then the big news that we announced uh, July 6th, the big taping on the Netflix special happening at the Mahaffey Theater. Tickets, I know they're going to start on Monday. Tickets go on sale. I have something to give away. I'm going to do it here before we go to break. Good talking to you, pal. And have a great time. I love you. Span- oh, Spanish is not here to say it. Back. I love you. I love you too, baby. Carmen, I love you. Carmen, I love you. You know I love you. I know, and I love you too. All right, Pop. Take it easy. See you, you. Bert. There you go, Bert Kreischer. 
that's, that's awesome. That's yeah. so fun. Yeah, listen, can you imagine, like you said, being the uh, going to Gasparilla for all these years, growing up here and loving it, and then being the Grand Marshal of it? Yeah, it's great. It's it's absolutely great, and I'm happy because he's not he. You can give it to anybody. You can say, um, Wade Boggs, you're you're a Tampa guy. You're a Hall of Famer. We're gonna make you the or Warren Sapp. We're gonna make you or even Baker Mayfield. And they're like, oh, it's a nice honor, cool. And you got to get up and you got to wave to people and throw some beats. Bert has been preparing for it for like for the last twenty years. Like this is the this is the greatest thing for him. So he's gonna he's gonna kill it this weekend. And now you guys know where to find him. Council Oak tonight and yeah. Hard Rock this weekend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just ask uh, for the machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, we got to take a break now. We're way too too late. But dizzy. Yes, sir. Core, core four. Uh, I'm going to take a break and uh, I'm going to give away two pairs of tickets to go see Bird's taping at the Mojave Theater on July 6th for the Netflix special. I know they're not in the thing. Just get their names and number and all that and we'll hook it up. The I guess the win them before you can buy them sort of thing. But I think they're really announcing it on Monday and we kind of jumped the gun. So. Uh, also, don't forget coming up in uh, eight minutes, the first keyword of the day. Oh, for bone, bone bonus keyword and uh, TJ Miller is going to be here. And then uh, John Sarasani is going to be here. We got food from the uh, Melting Pot Social is going to be here. Garmin's going to dip her pickle. We got a lot of <laughs> things to do today. It's Mike Cal to show. This is 1025 The Bone. Uh, okay, so now uh, TJ Miller was supposed to be here. His peanut butter was supposed to be here. Um, he, he, they had sent his peanut butter, but it never got here. And, uh, according to you, they had the correct address on where we were, but for some reason they took him to the radio station. Yeah. Your mic's going on. The address that the peanut butter went to is where he went, which is why I asked. What is that? Is contact. that the radio station? Yeah. Cause okay. I said, are you sending it here or to the radio station? And he said, I'm sending it to the station. I said, all right. Why wouldn't he just send it here? I don't know. All right. So instead, they sent uh, the peanut butter and TJ to, to the, the radio same, station. Yeah. So no TJ Miller today, because by the time he would get here, it would be close to nine o'clock. We have another guest coming at nine o'clock, and we got the melting pot social coming in today. I got uh, Chef Jason on his way here to melt the cheese and put Carmen's pickles in it. Yeah, so uh, that sucks. It I'm not mad. No, I, I know. I, it's, it just I sucks. take responsibility. It's my. Why? How is more, it your fault? I, but because I'm, it's my job, and I should have been more clear. And by but the I way, do we know this. what Dizzy is doing? Is Dizzy walking TJ back to the studio? I don't know. When I came in them, here, hey, uh, Spanish was on the phone with Dizzy, and Dizzy was with TJ Miller. So yes. what happened there? Uh, they were both downstairs because I, I don't know why TJ wasn't answering his phone because I called him a couple of times, and he was asking what other options there were. To which I said, "There's you're not going to make it here in time." Yeah. So yeah, that sucks. So yeah. so, but I I can't. A part of me wants to be mad, but I I don't. I I I think a strong part of me feels like this is your fault. But I accept. Yeah. I accept. No, no, but I feel like if only I feel like it's your fault because you're accepting it, even though you said before that it wasn't your fault. I I don't feel like it's my fault, but it's my my job. The the buck ends with me with this kind of stuff. Yeah, but if you gave them the right location and right. you said if you said here's the address where we're going to like i set up the uh the food today right so i said this is a we're home studio and this is the address right. would you feel better if you saw receipts if he has an email it says well i'm saying i'm worried that i'm gonna get an email from Rommelfinger that says this is what spanish sent me and it says the radio station in st Pete. well I, the last discussion that we had is via text message and i could show you all of them if you want what does it say he's asking me where to send the peanut butter and i said the peanut butter is either going to mike's or the studio. Yeah. So why would he so, send it to the studio? I don't know. Well, why would you let him send it to the studio? Why didn't you because just say I, send it to Mike? I did ask to send it to Mike. He said I'm going to send it to this radio to the radio station. I said okay. Well, that, why would he do that? I I don't. It know. Was he not clear that we we're broadcasting from Mike's house? He knows. I've, I've had okay, but I'm him. saying like if he was like, uh, why would I send it to Mike's house? I'm going to send it to the radio station where you guys are at. You know what I mean? Well, like, it's, I it was. I didn't say Mike's house. It's Mike's home studio. You know. Oh, okay. I mean? Yeah. So he he overpowered you and said no i'm gonna send it to the station <laughs> he just said he's sending it to the station well yeah. and then saying no do not send it to the station send it to the home studio well yeah. i didn't think it was gonna be an issue because we just grab the it. peanut butter mm -hmm. and bring it here mm -hmm. you, you now we don't have any peanut butter and we yeah, don't have tj miller. miller we don't have any peanut butter to feed it to us yeah. uh, listen to me i understand accidents happen mistakes are made we move on we got a lot of other things going on the show today I just some, somehow feel like this is your fault. Yeah. I feel like something's going to come up where it's where Alan Rommelfinger, publicist to the stars, is going to say, 
this is what Spanish sent me. And it's going to have the wrong address. Maybe, but I really no, no. I, but you shouldn't say maybe. <laughs> there's no. I, you should be like absolutely not. You got to understand. From my point of view, there's no winning here. So for me, because no matter How, what, again, if you said to me, because it's my, it no, no, ends no, no, with no, me. Yeah, it ends it. with me. I feel like you're not even confident in what you're saying. Do you I feel like he's confident, confident in what he's saying? No, because what you should have said is there's no way I was wrong, and I have receipts to prove it. And if Rommelfinger says this, he's wrong. Like he pro- show have him show you where I said at any point for TJ Miller to go to the station. Right. Well, I, again, I can show you the text exchange if you want. No, I trust you. If you say it, I don't, so you're not a liar. I don't, then I don't need. I, what feel, I, have to I feel like you're, you're, you are confusing in your argument with him. Like you said to him, like if somebody said to me, I'm sending the peanut butter, I'd be like, all right, well, here's the address and loots to send it to you. And if he said, I'm going to send it to the station, say, well, we're not going to get it. We're not there. Yeah, but I could grab it. I could easily but grab why it from would, the station. But why would you? Nobody why goes there. I? I know. Well, but, Carmen, this steps. is our base of operation. Yeah, but Carmen's always there. Uh, this is our base of operation. There shouldn't okay. even be a choice. Right. So why would, you, why would you allow him to have a choice? Because I didn't think it was going to end like this, obviously. Well, that's how, you, that's how mistakes happen. The right. door was left open. Okay. I so now, that. although that not a, necessarily a big deal, I feel like the same mistakes were, were probably made with the uh where am i taking him to uh again i didn't have anything to do with that i discussed with alan where the station is and where your home studio is he sent everything over there we don't do the show from the station we does do it he from know that mike's home studio yes that's why i said are you sending it to mike's home studio or uh-huh. to the station we but see, that's, the station. that's your yeah, yeah you're, you're okay. you left the door open to the sure, station yeah yeah you don't want to yeah. hear it. You don't want to listen. I, d- I started this conversation by accepting responsibility. Yeah, but you don't really. You're like, I, you, because you said, well, because you said it's all going to come down on me no matter what. Yes, because it's my job. It's the, the my, my job title. And who do you think is worse at your job, you or Joe? Oh, at my job? Yeah, at, at doing their job. Oh, I don't know. You don't know? I mean, uh, but n- no, Joe, I mean, who do you I, think is worse? Uh, well, me, of course. Yes. <laughs> because, See, that's a go yeah. <laughs> Did you or did you, were you or were you not told not to run that copyrighted video during the birth thing? Yes. But you, you ran it anyway. No, no, I absolutely, absolutely did not. I down, I uh, put up a uh, phone card. What is a what phone, is a phone card? card? Phone <laughs> card is so that we don't write, call run collect? copyrighted video. Yeah. It's what? So that we don't run copyrighted video. Dick is telling me we're getting dinged on that. So yeah. I'm going to avoid it. So that's what I did. I adjusted. But he said what that he that? talked to you yesterday. What is going on? I told him run? yesterday to stop using uh, and use images, still images only. And he, and he said you use the video anyway. No, he said don't run video for longer than 10 seconds. So that's oh. what I was doing. All right. So you were running it, taking it down, putting yeah. it back up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's the conversationally that works did you send the phone uh, card to the station <laughs> yes okay. is dizzy back in the studio yes sir core four all right what happened with uh with tj uh he called the line he was like hey i'm downstairs and i called up geo and them and i was like what so we went to break ran down he was there and i told him i was like they don't record from here so i don't know what they're gonna want to do let me call up you know geo in spanish was he mad he seemed a little kind of like confused and like yeah but well, i mean yeah. he's got every right to be he probably got up early it was planning on a big thing we love having him on the show yeah and then uh his guy screwed it up yeah he said that uh you know he was sent here and he asked me the address i'm like yeah that's here bro and then he's like well where are they and i told him and uh you know then he he seemed like it was on uh whoever spanish talked to it wasn't oh. on spanish he said that, um, yeah, he's like, my guy probably messed up because uh, Spanish said that he sent the address to the guy to send stuff. Yeah, and I guess he used that address. But, you know, I, I talked to TJ and, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you off air, but he, he's good. He's good now. He's cool. all right. Yeah. I feel bad because I like TJ. Yeah. And I, I, I was looking forward to having him on today. I'm not mad at him or anything like that. I just feel bad that we didn't get to see him. Yeah, and you can remember tickets. So I'm like, <laughs> four, four, baby. Uh, well, yeah, let's give him a plug. I'm not, I, I, he's going to be at the uh, Funny Bone in Ebor, which is formerly the improv. If, if you people don't know that, it's called the Funny Bone now, and he'll be there all weekend long. So uh, if you want to go see him and try his peanut butter, I don't know if he has it with him. His Spanish sent it to the wrong address. 
You know I'm just trying to get under your skin. You were it's working. Yeah, I know. I can see that. Yeah. Hey, you look like such an old man with your hair like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean that in a bad Here's way. Some more stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I'm nah. you're watching me mentally <laughs> unravel, but it's cool. Whatever. Here's some I more know. stuff for your skin. You already have the autoimmune disease, but uh... I know I can push you until your shoes come off. Once yeah, the shoes come off, then it's bad. Uh I gotta tell you, if you want to get back in the news, I have some more bad news for Spanish. I mean, do you do you think we should go do a back to news as executive producer? Yep. What would you do? I would go back to news. Back to news. You yeah. Say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. What, do you, what would news. you do? Uh, Spanish. I know you're a big fan and I know that you actually bought the DVD of this movie because you like this person so much. And it kind of ties in with Gatsby. Star of oh. the porn. What is it? Pirates. Pirates. Yeah. Pirates? Oh, yeah. Pirates. 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 Pirate hooker. Porn star Jesse Jane and her boyfriend were found dead inside their Oklahoma home uh, of apparent overdose. Mm. Jesse was only 43 years Dude, old. Everybody. Oh, There's a picture of uh, Jesse on Bone TV there. Yeah. Wow. That's Everyone's crazy. going down with the fentanyl, man. Yeah. Right? Stop doing drugs. Yeah. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you try to pull it back. I, I did. <laughs> I, yeah. I started it and I was like, I can't. Allegedly. I No. It's not worth it anymore. No. Yeah, you, only no, 43 not. years old. And she was, uh, you know, when you say porn star, not everybody's a porn star. If you're filming in a basement of some guy's place, whatever, you only know, you may, not, may not be a porn star. <laughs> she was a porn star. Everybody knew her and oh, knew yeah. her name and stuff. You know, she was the big one after, uh, what's her name? Jenna, Jenna Jameson. Jenna Jameson. Yeah. That was one of my favorite mo favorite moments uh, was Ted Webb, who is a radio legend, was down the hall with Jack Harris, and they were doing a show, and that, that uh, Pirates that was shot here um had come out and ted webb i was listening to him on the way in and ted webb was like i mean we should probably get our hands on one of those uh, just for research purposes <laughs> and, I, and i had like six of them at my desk mm. and i went and walked one down into the studio and he was like that's my guy, yeah. that's, my guy. <laughs> that's a go-getter that's a go-getter yeah. there's not yeah. many porn stars left really because yeah. it's been flooded with only fans and just random you well know, we did the uh list of the ones like the biggest names or whatever and uh number one was that nikki I think you said you knew who she was. Nicole Aniston? No. H Haley? Maybe Haley. it was. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm getting it wrong. She's super hot. But uh, there was one that I saw, and I go, is that the one? I don't even know. Like, I don't know any of their names. Uh, yeah, you used to. It's it's almost kind of like UFC. Remember when yeah. we knew every UFC fighter? <laughs> one and now, the same. and now there's like 10 guys on the card. You're like, I've never heard of this guy, but he's great. <laughs> and he has 30 fights. I don't know. Yeah. So, so um they have the avns going on right now the adult video awards in vegas oh in and, memoriam uh well yeah that's the thing and and oh. i saw that our friend uh, melissa dawson is out there i saw on snapchat oh yeah and I, I at first i was like so how does that work now is everybody who has an only fans a porn star now like do they all go out there and promote and and I would imagine you get lost in a sea of porn stars. Yeah, like, who's well? First off, I'm sure people love that that they get lost in a oh, sea yeah, of porn yeah, stars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but to stand out now, you got to have one foot. Well, you know? I think they have different categories now, probably for online stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And she's crushing it. She does very, very oh, well. There's still porn studios. I yeah, assume. yeah. They're still they making the movies and doing that stuff. They have people under contract and everything. But then there's independent people. Uh, you know that uh, crush online. And Independent stuff. people are making the money. Porn stars are not. Probably not. That's the truth because yeah, the yeah. porn Studios stars are getting a, a piece of something, and uh, like Melissa Dawson is getting all of her money. That's but her I company. wonder. I would imagine a lot of the porn stars go, "Okay, I'm doing movies with Wicked or whoever it is," but then I have my own yeah. thing here right. if they can. If they can, right? You know? If they can, then you're double dipping. You're getting at both ends. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's some bad news. Oh man, maybe dye your hair and get a different mustache or something to try this and hide. This is them. one of the most amazing things that I've ever heard. Uh, a former WWE staffer has accused Vince McMahon of sexual assault, trafficking, and physical abuse in a lawsuit that was filed yesterday. The new disturbing allegations from Janelle Grant, who worked at WWE's headquarters, come more than a year after the conclusion of the WWE appointed special committee investigation into McMahon's alleged misconduct while serving as chairman and CEO of the company. McMahon retired from his role amid the investigation in July of 2022, but since returned as chair of the WWE's parent company. In the lawsuit, Grant alleged that uh, McMahon promised a job and later a promotion at WWE in exchange for sex. Grant's lawsuit also includes allegations that McMahon trafficked her to other men inside and outside of the company, including 
John uh, Laurinaitis, a former W, a former wrestler He's who garbage. Uh, worked in the company's talent relations department, who is also named as a defendant in the lawsuit. Mm. Johnny Ace is garbage, and he uh, Johnny Laurinaitis was was in charge of talent for a while. Uh, most of the guys hated him. He is the brother of one of the Road Warriors. He's been around for a while. Uh, his nephew plays in the NFL. Well, he ended up marrying the Bella Twins. The Bella Twins' mother. mother yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's a good-looking guy. He's just a garbage human being. I know him. And uh, he, But the, the disturbing stuff in this thing was that I think him and Vince, according to the allegations, were having threesomes with her. And at one point it said that Vince pooped on this girl's head. Oh! oh. Yeah, oh, that they were, they were in a threesome. There's alleged text messages, and there were screenshots that she put out of the text messages. Of, Where he admits to that? Well, no, yeah. he, talk, he talks about it. So he, he tells her, uh, I'm going to have you on Monday, and then Johnny's going to have you on Tuesday, and Johnny's trying to book Thursday. Like, they really were, yeah. according to this, according to the text messages and all that, trafficking her around. So I have a question. Was that something he was into? No. Or was an old man old made man. a mistake? He was, they were having a threesome, and he was in a weird uh, position. So I don't know if he's doing stuff to Johnny Ace or what the deal is there, but it certainly made it sound like that, like they were all doing yeah. stuff to each other. And uh, and then he uh, pooped on her head by accident, and then got up and ran to the bathroom. Oh! So yeah, yeah, loose loose stool. Well, they, it's a mood wrecker. And apparently, from what I've read, yeah, she she was actually already paid hush money. Yeah, before like before. The, yeah, she was paid money to keep her mouth shut, and she's still coming out. She was supposed to, to get, her. She was supposed to get three million dollars, and uh, they gave her one million dollars, and then missed the deadline to pay her the rest of the money. So. It uh, stopped her her order for silence, so I'm she sorry. was yeah. a, That's why she was able to. Talk. That is not enough money for that mistake. Uh, <laughs> I need a lot more. And, if someone does million? that to and me. Three million. I'd let Vince McMahon poop on my head. <laughs> oh. At any yeah. point, did he go? He's gonna poop. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna. Oh no! He's gonna. The other weird thing they said that was that he would use a variety of uh, sex toys and dildos, and he would name them after wrestlers. Yeah. Here oh. comes the Undertaker. Oh. Off and the then, top rope. Yeah, yeah, like he's using the Undertaker, and all of a sudden you hear a glass crack. Oh, it's so oh. cold. Ready for Andre the Giant? No. I. This is one of the weirdest, most disturbing things that I've heard. I look. I imagine anybody that's a superstar or has superstar in their title is on TV and worth a billion dollars. They're probably having a lot of sex, okay? Even if they're married, I think married women at a certain point, they realize this is what's going to happen in my life. And and the rumors were that she was also, this is a 100% rumor, but that Linda McMahon uh, was also a little bit of a swinger, that they had like an open kind of relationship. Okay. So if that's the case, that's fine between the two of them, but it's still, it's still weird that they take this young, uh, hot girl and they... You know, throw her around to each other and poop on her head and yeah. violate her with uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin dildos and I don't know. It's just that's a weird ass story. But I, I the idea also that Johnny Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon are doing threesomes yeah. together allegedly is is something else, man. Wee. That's just a, that's a lot of old man. That's like two leather bags just. <laughs> oh, uh, weirder situation that where they're doing stuff and he's got the uh, sex toys named after wrestlers or his weird eyebrows and mustache no I, that's the thing too though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. at what point do you do uh, like who said that, that was a good idea but is he like does he think that he's incognito like people are like well, i thought that was vince mcmahon but clearly that's not i think vince mcmahon was a handsome guy he had a nice head of hair yeah. he was in great shape like and why the gray, now? And the gray look good on him. Yeah, now he's got the pencil mustache. He looks like he's tying people to railroad tracks. He, yeah, he <laughs> looks like a, uh, a villain on a uh, Mexican soap opera. Yeah. He looks like in the 80s if he was playing uh, the bad version of himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. evil Vince McMahon. I feel like uh, since so he is the guy there that nobody around him can tell him that something looks bad. Yeah. Like I think Triple H tells him. Yeah, maybe. I think Triple H is probably his best, his best advisor. Because it's his son-in-law, and he's already grandfathered in. I mean, I watched him. He's they talked so much about this deal with Netflix, and they kept referring to to uh, Paul Levesque, who is Triple yeah. H, and how much he really had to do with the deal. So I, I, I think he's just like let old man be crazy. I got a company to run. But you have to think, even like at some party or something, some guy who's not involved in WWE was like, "Hey, yeah. man, you look weird." You know? Like, <laughs> do you know when I'm in bed scrolling through Instagram? How would I, I know this? <laughs> <laughs> you were always there. <laughs> my daughter will turn to my wife and go, Dad's looking at girls on Instagram. Oh, right now. Oh, wow. And, and can, can you imagine if 
my daughter, uh, like if his daughter has to go, I understand that you want to bang on a girl, but you, you, you crap on a girl's head. Yeah. Did you crap on a girl's Dad. head. Dad. Dad. What are you doing? It's the worst. Uh, X and other social media sites are starting to crack down yesterday after sexually explicit deep fakes of Taylor Swift, partially clad oh, in boy. Chiefs gear, went viral. Uh, Taylor is uh, reportedly considering a lawsuit, but there's no word on who she would go after. Because No, they found the guys. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Oh. And they blocked them. They took down all of their profiles. So, you know, what's X so crazy is it takes Taylor Swift for this to happen because you know how many other celebrities oh, and different people yeah. they've done this about. And then once you do it to Taylor Swift, you are getting shut because down. Because she's got the resources That's right, to come after she has you. all the Swifties that will be like, we'll all get off of your social media platform. Think, think I went through Reddit. I went through everything. I cannot find any of those oh, pictures. Carmen. Okay. I saw one of the pictures. Yeah. It was not. I, it was not a, a, a sexual. It, one, but it was her. One. It was her looking like kind of sexy. Yeah. I may um, have seen all of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the, Taylor Swift, if you if you stop and think about it, has done one of the most unprecedented things ever. When, uh, what's his face bought her catalog? What is his name? Scooter. Scooter, Scooter Braun. Braun. When Scooter Braun bought her catalog, it bothered her so much. That she went and re-recorded and is in the process of re-recording every one of her albums, so th- so that she will still have the upper hand in that situation. Imagine the work that goes into doing that, and the money that goes into doing that. And she, so she's she's somebody you don't want to fight with because she's willing to go and take the fight. A lot of people are just like, oh, it's not worth the fight. I just deal with it. I I have done that so many times where I'm like, yeah, I could sue them, but what? It's not worth the battle. Right. It's just not worth it. So then you just let it go. She's like, nope, I'll do it. I'll take it. I'll fight it. Because she wrote those songs. Yeah. A lot of, like, all the the music. Yeah. It, like, she, obviously, she had help Since she and was stuff. a kid. Right. But, like, all of that. You know what I mean? Think about it. That is your life. Wor- that's your life's work. Yeah. And then someone just takes it and no. like, ha, ha, now it's mine. She's like, bitch. Her yeah. fan base is so massive that yeah. even yesterday, they were, it was like, it was like, protect Taylor was a hashtag. Yeah. <sighs> and they were, like, just uh, going through the internet, just going there. There's so many people that it, you couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, have you guys seen the trailer for the new Roadhouse that's coming to Amazon? No. I'm so torn because so the guy's name is Dalton, but it's a different first name. So is this a reboot or is he the son of Dalton? Because there was a son of Dalton Roadhouse movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if this guy is just Jake I Gyllenhaal. Think, character. I think this is a uh, reinterpretation okay. because, it, you know, he's a UFC fighter. Right. Right. Uh, but it's similar. The lady who owns the bar comes and finds him, and she wants him to help out because they're trying to build stuff and take down the bar and do a whole thing. Well, the director of the new uh, Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal, the remake is what they call it, is upset that Amazon is sending it straight to Prime without a theatrical release. I can't wait. Uh, he says they're, quote, using Roadhouse to sell toasters. I don't know what that <laughs> means. I don't think Amazon needs help yeah. Yeah. selling stuff, whatever. But I got to tell you, Jake Gyllenhaal, Carmen, figure out what he's doing. Figure out what car that guy's driving, because good <laughs> Lord. Yeah, I guarantee you, Jake Gyllenhaal hasn't eaten in the last year. You know, he's so shredded. But that's, he's eating properly, yeah. is what the thing is. Yeah, he is unbelievably, because in that movie Southpaw, where he was a boxer, yeah. he was in right. great shape. Now this. I mean, how old is Jake Gyllenhaal? He's got to be in his late forties, right? Yeah, easily. Is yeah. he? Yeah. yeah, he's got to be. I mean, he's yeah. been around for I mean, a long I, yeah, time. Yeah, I guess you're right. Timeline, but I would have said from that thing he would have been in his thirties. But you're right; he's got to be in his forties. Oh, oh okay, yeah. so early forties. Still, though, yeah. to have that body at forty three. Yeah. I gotta tell you. Yeah, Con- what are you, Gio? <laughs> forty three. Uh, <laughs> uh, Conor McGregor is in here, and he works for the guy. Whatever. Wow, is his acting bad? Oh, right. I thought he did good because he was so he was being himself, right? But he's in. I, I'm assuming that he's another UFC fighter because yep. the way he comes in, ah, I'm here. Yeah. You gotta and just doing Conor McGregor. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. Conor McGregor Listen, bothers me. Uh, Roadhouse, the first one with Patrick Swayze. Yeah, was no Academy Award winning film, and we all love it. Oh yeah. So uh, this may film. be great. Yeah, this may be great, and it's not gonna have all the nuances, but you never know. Uh, I need to know who the band is. That's a very important part. Very important. Jeff Healy said they were somewhere between extras and co-stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, it, it, I I would rather them make a new version of the movie than just try to remake the old one yeah. scene by scene, you know? Yeah, I think it has, like, the basic outline is going to be the same, and then there's some different stuff. Like yeah. I said, you know, him being a UFC fighter, The it's a woman, a black woman that owns the bar, you know, so they're changing. Uh, Did they show the stuff. villain who's the bad guy? Well, the bad guy is uh, uh, he's a young white dude. Okay. He's like a rich kid. OK. Yeah. But I think he, he you know, he's playing the part similar to mm-hmm. uh, what's his name? 
uh, why, why can't I think Brad of Wesley. Yeah. Wesley, yeah. Will yeah. anybody's throat get ripped out in this remake? Well, that's, I mean, that's the most to. important thing. Right? You know? By the throats. way, how about the tribute? McRuber <laughs> with the, the throat. That's it. <laughs> ripping throats, baby. So he uh, talks about getting a turkey and ripping out three different throats, and he has two. <laughs> And they have the one guy, and they're talking about, well, you know, they're going to kill him in this set. And McGruber's going like this, uh, like on his own. Uh, and he's like, I can tell you want to do it. He goes, well, if you turn. Uh, <laughs> uh, finally, news. This is a great scenario. This is a fantastic scenario. And I want to know what you guys think, whether this is right or wrong. Would you do this? How it works out. So a woman claims that she and her husband left a $154 tip at a restaurant, $200 in cash, and the bill was $46. So it's forty six dollars, and they're like, "Here you go, two hundred bucks. That's a hundred and fifty dollar tip for you." Okay. But the staff stopped them on the way out, thinking that they were leaving without paying the bill. So the woman went back to the table, picked up the two hundred dollars, put down a fifty, which is a four dollar tip, and left. Would you do the same thing if you just left a hundred and fifty four dollar tip and you were walking out, and they said, "Hey, hey you got to pay your bill." Would you say, oh no, we left it on day? Like, how does that work out? Yeah. Well, I, it depends on their attitude. Like, uh, like to me, it just seems like I'd say, oh no, I left it on the table, and they go, oh okay, you know. But yeah, then if they're like, no, you didn't, and they go back there, and then they were dicks about it, then I would have done it. Because right. I imagine most, like most people, pay with a card, so the server probably never went back and picked up the bill. So they were like, oh, excuse me, you didn't pay. And yeah, you just say, no, yeah. I left the cash. It d definitely depending on the attitude of the yeah. people. And also, if you're leaving $200 cash, $154 tip, give it to the waiter or waitress. Yeah, yeah you, know, you don't, don't leave that leave at the, it table. On the table. Because a busboy will take that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But <laughs> like okay, Perkins, so let me, give, and 19. let me give you this scenario. You do that. You <laughs> live a, leave a $154 cash tip and you're walking out and they're like, where do you think you're going? And do that to you. And you go, I'm leaving. And they go, you got to pay your bill. You can't just, do, you know, order food and not pay it, your bill. Yeah, but I beg for their food. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all depends on how they address them. Yeah. Can I tell you something? No. And this is from a guy. <laughs> Wait, no. This is from a guy who worked in the service industry. Carmen, you know as well. Yeah. Thank people. Yeah. yeah. Thank them for tipping. Acknowledge them tipping. Do you know how many times my credit card sends me an email? Did you mean to leave yeah. a 84% tip on this, whatever? And do you know what the waiter or waitress said to me? Take yeah. the thing. Well, they, they may not know, realize it right out Listen, of the gate. You walk away and you open that book yeah. and you look to see what they tipped you. You did everybody does that. Yeah. Everyone does that. And then there's nothing. I just go, all I got, right. Well, yeah. see you later. I gotta tell you, when I was a server, I would thank them before. Before I even look sure. at them, so they know. Like I would pick it up, not open it, and be like, "Thank you so much. It was a pleasure serving you." And then walk away, and then I'd look at it. And if I and if it, they left you one hundred and fifty four dollars, I would you'd go back. Yes, exactly, yeah. one hundred percent. I'd be like, "Thank you so much." I mean, I appreciate I, it. Listen to me. But, I don't care. I, I'm if I'm big tipping, especially if it's really a big tip or something, I get it and get out of there. I, I that uncomfortable. Thank you. It makes me feel weird. So I don't. I'm not doing it to be thanked for it. I'm doing yeah. it to make them happy, and I don't need to hear. I'm not saying you guys need to hear. I just I I try to run out of there before it gets weird. I have to tell you one of on one of my last serving jobs, but uh, before I didn't need to do it anymore. Uh, it was my last table. I had put in my two weeks because mm -hmm. I was starting at a no bar, and my last table it was two girls, and they worked at some type of office, either a veterinarian office. They were some type of front desk. They were wearing scrubs. They got a value meal which was only like five or six bucks and drinks and this and they shared a dessert their bill was about 22 dollars. they left me one dollar oh and it was my last that's the worst it was you my, know they didn't forget they yeah. did it on purpose it was my last table and i had put in my two weeks and everything was going fine and i and they were walking out to the parking lot i went and looked i was like uh uh mm. i walked out of that parking lot i was like don't go out to eat if you can't afford to tip. Oh. Dude, they turned around and like, what did you say? Uh. Oh, we got in the, a huge Carmen, screaming match. You know what you should have done? What? You should have went and took that dollar and got four quarters and just whipped two oh. of each of them. <laughs> it was, did you make sure first before? <laughs> what did you guys, they were like, we put it 20. It's under yeah. the table. Oh, yeah. No, 100% because I cleaned the table. Mm. I made sure this and that. And they came back and they're like, we want to talk to your manager. How dare you? Nah. They were like, if you... It, you pick this job. If you wanted more money, you should do something else. We work in an office. We don't have to tip. I was uh, like, oh, and get, but 
after that, all the other girls that were working came up to me and thanked me. They yeah. were like, thank you so much. Our tables, all everyone got a $20 tip uh, from their table. Yeah. Nobody wanted Carmen to yell at them in the yeah, parking lot. Everyone got such a good tip after that that all the other girls were like, thank you so much. That's fun. Yeah. But then after that, I got fired. So my two weeks didn't even matter. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is it for news. Uh, speaking of receipts, huh? I just got receipts, Joe. Uh, okay. Cheese? Huh? Cheese? No receipts. No. Yeah, from uh, <laughs> from Big Dick. Oh, oh boy. Uh, he said that he he told you to use the phone card on the on the on the screen instead of the live video. Yeah. And he said you didn't use the phone card till nine minutes into the interview. Oh, he is absolutely correct. I didn't think <laughs> I had to use the phone card every single time. Oh, uh, man. I wasn't. I don't know what is the phone card. I don't understand. It, it's this is a, like a little a thing, graphic. A little, yeah, a graphic yeah, that says graphic. on the on the phone. It's you know, oh. it's not as nice to okay. look at. So I thought I'd just bury it up. But, yeah, uh, you but know, you no ruin problem. our monetization uh, on YouTube. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> now you're messing with the money, Joe. Yeah. Now just, you're messing so, with the money. Can I so just put lied. it out there no. uh, uh, that Dick said? He went to a, a speaking engagement last night with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm. He's like, I was in a room with one of the smartest human beings in the world, and now I have to work with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Job. All right, Rich. We I have, hear you. We have no peanut butter. Mm. We have no monetization. Sorry. We have God. nothing. Right. Falling apart. Good job, guys. Poor TJ yeah. Miller. Had to get up early for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, he says he loves you guys, by the way. Yeah, I, I love him, too. Yeah. He's great. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, you abandoned me. When Bert said I love you, I was like, mm. oh, I'm sorry. I, I got you. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm you, going on the you. float tomorrow. No, yeah. not you. Yeah. I'm cool with that. I almost had to mumble it back at him. <laughs> All right. We are uh, going to do some picks for the death pool. Tony says he can call in. Okay. Yeah. If you can just call the hotline and dizzy, if you don't mind pulling that up for us. Got you, brother. And then uh, you got, we have Ian's picks, too. I believe Spanish is Spanish, and then I have Spanishes, but I don't have Ian's. Well, why can't? Well, you he had to go get the. You're letting him go. That makes sense. Today. He's failing me today. <laughs> I expect somebody who works for me. Okay. Yes. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta take this call. Mm -hmm. right in the middle of the show. Hello. All right. All right, send them in, please. <laughs> Thank you. They can't do that through text. I don't know. She said Jack's here. I don't know who Jack is. I yeah, just say him yes. in. Come on, Jack. Yes to everybody. Wait. <laughs> oh, Jack may be with uh, Melty Pot. Soda machine. Maybe he's the week. chef guy or whatever. The uh, Spanish with Jason. Oh, I don't know. Well, what about the and other I already guy? let Jason in. But what uh, about the other guy? Now Jack. John. But if he has a driver, Listen, he has a guy. If you have a, <laughs> if you have a John and a Jason coming and they say Jack, let him in. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, we'll figure it out. Listen. All right, let's do the death pool picks. Oh, let's Jesus. get to it. Who picks first? Uh, Tony, actually. Yes. All right, uh, Dizzy, if he can, bring Tony up on the line. What, what line is he on? Uh, I didn't, it, he didn't call any. Let me see if this one's him on the second one. <laughs> no, he should be calling the hotline. We're a mess today. I said call now. He said okay. We're a mess. We're an absolute mess. Yeah. Uh, the phone number is, by the way, 727-579-1025. Uh, Mike Kelt, the show. Good morning. Hello. Hey, what's up? It's me, Medicine Man. Question: Will you be mad if I take you as a local pick? Uh, he done it five years ago when I was at getting my uh, heart valve repair in North Carolina. Right. Um, I'm very healthy now, so I don't think I'm gonna kick a bucket that soon. I don't know, dude. They get they're taking junk out of your house. You're a hoarder. You, it's you know. I'm not a hoarder. A hoarder were. save anything. You did save anything. Your backyard was visible through uh, satellite pictures. You know, that was a very old picture. And that was right after Hurricane um, Ida, you know, because Ida. that's some of that stuff they had in the satellite picture was my neighbor's yard. And that's not even mine. And I have nothing to do with my neighbor's yard. They don't know they're asking a hole in the ground, you know, <laughs> taking dimensions of somebody's yard, those county people, you know? <laughs> You're the best, man. Goddamn inbreds and hicks they were. Oh, in my county anyway. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, yeah. Jeez. All right. All right. I gotta go. Um, yes. And I can say this because Ian is three picks behind because we weren't able to get Jeez. in contact with him last uh, time that we did picks. But uh, we have those three picks and three more picks for today. So we have to just basically start off with the three picks that he because right, who, he did send them in those days. While we're waiting day. for Tony, who yeah. who does Ian have? Okay. So his first three picks that are just automatic are Little Wayne, Mean Joe Green, Ooh. and Whitney Ford. Who's Whitney Ford? 
Oh, uh, you guys are just going to let that one slide? Well, no, I literally just got those like two seconds ago. I so know, I don't know who Whitney Ford is. Did he mean Whitey, Whitey Ford? Whitey Ford, sorry. Oh, okay. Whitey Ford died, didn't he? He died in 2020. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. got to tell you, Ian's not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I have explained to him, he was like, you got to give me more time. I was like, you should have a list yeah. ready to go. And that way you're just always ready. And he's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know how quick I am to boot still... people out of the death pool. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, at least he's we got, on the hotline. We at least got two of the three. That Whitey Ford on the hotline? <laughs> <laughs> him too. I can't answer the hotline. If you could just pull it up, Dizzy. Got you. Thank you. Tony? Michael? All right, there I'm you here. are. All right, now Tony picks first. You're up, Tony. All right, from uh, Chicago Bears, and Steve McMichael. Already been picked. All right? Didn't oh, I think right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Mongo Steve, McMichael. Yeah. I don't know. Did you already pick him? Because you had him before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know. Yes, you do. Yeah. All right. There you go. Are you, are you sure? Yes. I, I thought I checked. I thought he was available. Okay. Um, YouTube star Eugenia. Cooney. <laughs> you mean you know that's not gonna fuck? I mean, yeah, come on. No, no, but, but didn't we already already pick someone who was a YouTube star? I mean, I voted no for that, but yeah, we did. We did. It was and a reptile died. guy, yeah. And check this. Check it out. She has seven hundred twenty-six thousand. Not... Did not make the million. Not the did not make the million. Yeah, we're uh, gonna, we're gonna go no. Million. We're gonna go no on that one. She has two million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, said all. Yeah, but we said it but was. We said Instagram. Instagram, you had to have a million followers. You did not. Oh, did this not is meet so the arbitrary. This is ridiculous. Listen, Vote, we three, ma- two, one. No. 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 Hey, how's it feel, Tony? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's anorexic. She doesn't eat. Yeah, boo. Yeah. All right, next one that you're not going to get. Wait, why is he getting two? You know, oh, you're, you're a, a horrible person. Did he, he hasn't picked one? He hasn't oh, picked he hasn't one picked one. Oh, he, he picked has... one that Mike has, and he picked one that's oh. not eligible. <laughs> Andy Taylor, Duran Duran. Oh, he said. Oh, yeah. He's See, he's that's the big that, casino. That's that should have been your first one. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. All right. Then who's next? Next is Ian. Ian. Ian, you sound different. <laughs> is he? He's not with us, right? He's not on the phone. No. no. So Ian's next pick is Richard Petty. I'm going. Driver. Mm-hmm. The, the, what do they call him? The um. The king. King, the king, king. yeah. Is that it? The king, the Richard king? Petty, yeah. All right, who's right. next? Spanish? Jake the Snake Roberts. Mm. I feel like Jake the Snake's kind of like uh, one of those guys who will never die like Menace Man. I, I mean, I hope not. I need and he's points. on the health kick. He's, yeah. you know, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, you can't Helped be unhealthy all your life and then health it up yeah. at the very end. <laughs> I get it. I get it for sure, yeah. All right, next. Pap, pap. Uh, I will be going with Vanessa Redgrave. Okay. Okay. Joe likes all the old ass. Actors. I know, right? Mm. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, then it's me. I am going Val Kilmer. I think Sony picked him. Did you no. pick Val Kilmer? No, are you sure? Yeah, Joe. No. <laughs> Geo tried and it was his his original pick. I thought got I got accepted. Val oh yeah. Oh, so Val list. Kilmer's available. Yeah. No. No. All right. That's okay. He's no. good. He beat the cancer. Mm. Did he? All right, who's next? <laughs> uh next is Galvin. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy who has been on the death pool quite a bit. I think this is probably his year. Billy Connolly. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, that's He's right. He's still alive, yeah. yeah. 81. All right. Mike? I will take uh, Big Daddy Don Garlic. Oh, the dragster guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Geo? Two picks. Um, Ray Stern and Oof. Vincent Curatola. Who From is The Sopranos? Johnny Sack. Johnny Sack, yeah. All right. And uh, hey, Howard, Michael? Howard Stern, Mike? yes. I think I think Ray Stern might be deceased. Uh, no. Yeah, the rumor was that she had died, oh. and that he didn't talk about it. No. Yeah, well, it's not on line. I know, but That's... I got gotcha. you. No, I mean, but I mean, so if it if it ever I need confirmation. Once it comes out, then I he mean, can repick. If it was already dead, he gets a repick. Yeah, but we, all right, all right. So, so you want to hold it? You want to hold it? Sure. All right, that's fine. So mark the time and the date, 8.50 on uh, January 26, 2024. <laughs> it has to be before that. Yes. For it not to count, but if it happened. After. Yeah, if it happened sometime today. Now, he's not mentioned anything about his mother? No. Hmm, interesting. He's okay. up next week. He's up next week. Oh, all right. 
All right, that's then. Good. That's a good pick, I, I, would have, I would have another pick ready to go. See, can I point out, by the way, that I'm happy for you. Like, that's a good pick. You did a good job. Thanks. I'm not against you. She's already dead. Wait. Oh, she, you know that for sure? I don't know that. No, it, nobody knows that. But right, but that's good. That she's already dead. Yeah. Well, then that's good, though. But if it, it, if it comes out and she right, died right. yesterday, uh, you then you don't get it. Shot. But it, you know, oh, <laughs> can't call it, can't call it shot. Yeah, you can. Well, if no, she dies, we're not done yet. yeah. You if she dies in the future, no, you can't. I'm hanging on to it. But I'm, wow. All right. It's four points times three. <laughs> Who's next? Back to you, Michael. I will take uh, race car driver Michael Schumacher. Ah, uh, I, Ugh. you know, I looked about him, and you can't really find much information. But that's been quite a while, so we don't know gotta what's really be, going on. Gotta be going. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Galvin. Uh, I'm gonna go with Selma Blair. Oh, nice. Was she Blair. sick? She is. She sick. has yeah. uh, an S, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She is uh, 51, and yeah. I don't know her and Christina Applegate. I think. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is weird. Yeah. Okay. Then over to me. I'm going Bonnie Bartlett. Oh, oh. Bonnie Bartlett, yes. Little House on the Prairie. Yes, no, I? yeah, yeah, is that what it is? no, yeah. She has been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, Saint no. Elsewhere, Twins. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, yeah. know. I was. She was on my. She's list. married to uh, William Daniels, yes, who uh, exactly. Mike has. That's why if he goes, she goes. If she oh, goes, yeah. he goes. Yeah. Nice. We should get married points. Uh, <laughs> <Yep>. All right. <laughs> Who's next? Have have. Uh, because you took Bonnie Bartlett from me, I will be going with Nancy Olson from Sunset Boulevard, oh, Academy Award you son of a winning bee. actress. She was my next pick. Yo. Mm. And then we go to Spanish, who just left. Oh. So. Uh, he doesn't get the pick. He just get up and walk out? No. He's uh, going to get. Yeah. Which I have picks for him, but again, he when he came in and did his picks, that wasn't one of the picks he gave me to do. Well, So I don't. Mm. Yeah, so we can skip him, uh, or we can just wait. Can we just we dip our head in the hall and be like Spanish? We need you for a second. Or just say, "What's your next pick?" I think it's falling apart. Falling apart, right? Yeah. Spanish is over there. Yeah. Under pressure. I don't want to say it. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> 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 who said, I, I, who said, who said that? that? I heard something. <laughs> right. I'm not sure who said it, but I heard something. <laughs> <laughs> And I feel like a voice is speaking right to my soul. <laughs> Dizzy was with, with PJ Miller. Yeah, Dizzy actually pulled it off. <laughs> yeah. I just Maybe reposted got, your picture, Dizzy. Yeah, I got a picture for yeah, media and everything. Yeah, on the show. Ratton. Who? Mary Lou Ratton. All right. Oh, she's all right. fine. Yeah. Everybody helped her out. Uh, all right. Then who's next? Then we go to Ian, which the next pick for him, Larry Holmes. Okay. Boxing, great. Heavyweight okay. champion, yes. There we go. And then back to Tony. Two picks. Um, I will go with WWE and AEW announcer. I think Jim Ross. Yep. Okay. I, was, I thought about picking JR. Okay. And then I will go with. Uh, I know we picked him a bunch of times already. Uh, Tim Curry. Okay. Is Does he anybody have him or no? Just make sure nobody has him. Tim Curry's a good pick, but he has, like you said, been on the list quite a few times, so he's outlived. The... He's just oh. a head in the box. Now. Yeah. All right. So he's Tony's available. Got Tony's yeah. got him. All right, you Tony, go. you're done. And then back to... Back to Ian, which his next pick after the one he gave me, Marv Levy. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Marv Levy. Levy. Okay. okay. Yeah, Tony, bye. Oh! <laughs> wow. You're done. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I All says right, Galvin has next? that, though. He does? I think so. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. I didn't even realize I was looking at my list. Yep. I do have Marv Levy. So then. He was my first pick. We have Jack Fleck. Fleck? Golfer. Get out of here. Mm, yeah. yeah. Listen, just because you're uh, well, a golfer it? doesn't make you famous. Yeah. I get you. I'm just going American down his list. Golfer. No. And he was I don't there. know. Yeah. All right. It definitely does not have a million followers. So then his next one. Is Donald Barksdale <laughs> African American to pl- oh, the first African American to play with the U.S. Olympic team, and he joined the team in basketball at the 1948 no. Summer Olympics. It's, I'm just giving you I know, what just, he's giving I, I'm me. I'm just letting you know. No, it literally says he died in 1993. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Died in 1993. Oh, Hands the worst. All right. He's too much of the he's kava less... in his. He's got too much kava in his. Less than Joe. Okay, so we're skipping him. I'm I will telling take him the king of pop, Michael Jackson. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. He's dead. 
Okay. I'm going to take JFK. Oh, good pick. Mm. Good pick. Uh, and th- okay, so now we just skip down to Spanish. Taryn Manning. Taryn Manning. Yeah. Taryn Manning. Okay. You just took that from my list last year. Okay. And now we are on Joe. Uh, I will be going with Louis Farrakhan. Oh, I, Somebody uh, took him. I think I took him. Yeah. Oh, I think I took him. Let me see. Okay. Yep. I have Farrakhan. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah really? Attention to this Idiot. Because yeah. I did my research and I picked him before you. Yes. Correct. All right. Joe doesn't have the internet. <laughs> He's got a calling card. Yeah. <laughs> What is he doing? How do you not have five oh, picks? I do. To go? I already do. Roberta Flack. Make sure she's alive because I know that he didn't. <laughs> okay. She's good. Let me see. Roberta Flack. Yes, she's still alive. 86 years old. Very good. All right. Okay, now it's to me, and I will pick Shirley McLean. Oh. Oh, she's lived so many lives. She's got different lives. Yeah. yeah, but she's 89. Yeah, all those lives take a toll on you. <laughs> I get it. All right, <laughs> that's like good. like a cat. <laughs> uh, then we are in Galvin. I am going to go with a man who fell in love with the mop, Perry Saturn. Yeah. Perry Saturn, the uh, wrestler. Yeah. All right. Is he sick? Yeah, he's uh, been. He looked. Have you seen him lately? Or he was so mad because Hogan, he said, never bothered to learn his name. He used to always call him Satellite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he was old and weird with that face tattoo. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. He's only 57, by the way. Yeah. He that's... looks like he's 87. Yeah, not a good. Uh, Mike? I will take uh, actress Terry Gar. All right. Okay. 80 years old. Is she available? She's available. She's 80 years old. She's got MS. All mm-hmm. right. And close it out, Gio. Uh, Walter Koenig. Check off. Check off. Check off. Check off. Mm-hmm. Check off my list. <laughs> You've been ch- Tarkov? <laughs> uh, Tarkov with Chekhov. Been tar- been off. All, right. All right, we're good. That's Tony, it. thank you. You're welcome, Michael. Take it easy, Dizzy, if you can handle that for me. Uh, we will take a break. What do we got? What's the deal with the who's here? What's going Everybody's on? here. We have food is being prepared, and um, the other guest is here as All well. All right, I'll bring, I'm going to take a break. We'll bring John in next. Okay. And then uh, John Sarasani, he, uh, if you, I don't even know how to explain him. He's, he's an entrepreneur. He's, he's a, a go getter. He's, he's a go getter. He's a go getter. <laughs> yeah. He's a go getter. I, I, I don't think Spanish is never going to like that word again. Yeah. No, no, I, yeah. 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 Sorry, I was thinking about something. Oh, I, what were you thinking about? A noose? Oh, no. oh, oh my god. Well, he looks today oh, like he's not soon, happy. Like, <laughs> Jesus. For real. Soon. Give him some time. Uh, it looks like he's not having a good day today. I'm having a great day. Okay. All right. And we are live in the studio. I have been doing this for a long time and uh I have I have met celebrities, I have met athletes. I don't care about anybody anymore. Our next guest is a guy named John Sarasani who just caught my attention on Instagram. I don't know why you Honestly, John, I'll be honest with you. You seem like a guy I would not be attracted to. You yell a lot. You're threatening to me. You're good looking. I'm like, I don't need this in my life. But honestly, I started following you. I don't even know why. I don't know what you said that made me follow you. I'm not trying to be an entrepreneur, but there's just something about a guy like you who gets their act together and is a real go-getter and that I admire. And I started following you. And now I think I even gave you money one time. You were getting money for an investment, <laughs> not an investment, but like to do good deeds or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I'm in on this guy. Like you had me all wrapped up. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't, I, I, I purposely don't want to know anything about you until you came in the studio so we could talk. So what I know is that you had an insurance company and mm-hmm. by the time you were what, 35, you sold it and, and were pretty much retired. Yeah. So my story is interesting because there's definitely people out there with more money than me or more success than me. But what I did is something that really anyone could have done. And when I was 27 years old, I had an epiphany that, hey, corporate America is kind of kind of a brainwash. The stuff they're trying to convince you of. So I'm on that fast track trying to be area vice president, Arthur J. Gallagher and company, this insurance giant billion dollar organization. Hey, look at me. I'm making it. And it just light bulb went off. Dude, I could do this crap from my house. Right. So I quit my job, do the exact same job for myself. I called giving giving myself a two thousand percent raise, is what <laughs> I like to say. Put myself on top of the org chart, made myself rich and someone instead of, st- instead of someone else else. And then ten years later, not even ten years later, I sold the company into private equity when I was thirty seven and now I don't work 
that and now your family doesn't come from much means, right? Your father was a high school football coach. I know that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, n- nothing to shake a stick at with with uh, public school teachers in Illinois. It's definitely weren't impoverished. Right. Right. right, right. <laughs> but, but, but but they get paid pretty well there. But it's definitely very middle class. Grew up in Schaumburg, Illinois. So a lot of what I like to talk about what you're referring to on social media is that, hey, dude, there's nothing special. I went to some world-class universities, right. but it was good because I was like, good at football. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. like, I would never have gotten those schools about football. You know what I mean? So you, so when you, uh, when you leave, like what's, not everybody can do that, or you right. say everybody can do that. Yeah, I, listen, once you have that, that, that understanding that, you know, that, that you as the employee in a lot of industries, you're the product. Yeah, you are the product. So you're in consulting, you're in brokerage, you're you know a lawyer, wh- whatever the hell you are. If it's a service oriented job, you are the product. Right. So so, so now it's like, hey, for me, they I had an eight hundred thousand dollar book of business at Arthur J Gallagher when I was twenty seven. Uh-huh. They were paying me one hundred forty grand, but I but I turned the tables and said, but well, you're not paying me one forty. I'm paying you six sixty. What did you do to earn that money? You start looking at it that way. Right. You know what? I'm gonna go out on my own. And how long before you had the success? How long before you were like, this is working already? Well, so one of the smartest things I do, and I tell people, I make fun of like, I, I give people a hard time for being W-2 employees. Screw the W-2. Right, right, right. But you need that time as a W-2 employee. To learn. To learn, yeah. yeah. And I call that my paid training. So I had six years in the industry. I, I knew what I didn't know now at that point. Boom, I'm ready to go. And uh, and now you're, so you're here in Tampa, you do these seminars? Yeah, not really, man. So, so what's funny is everyone thinks they're like workshops and seminars right, where right. I'm selling a course. Dude, I'm not, dude. I like honestly, just, here's why I'm in Tampa. Just a meetup or so one of my followers on Instagram invites me to this thing he knew I was a pro wrestling fan. He's right. like, Hey dude, come out of Tampa. I'll, meet, I'll introduce you to the Hulkster. Uh, so I spent the day with Hogan yesterday. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna parlay this in with a dinner with any of my followers that wanna come. Uh, we, we went to American Social, Jackson's Bistro last night and nice. had a great time, man. Great time. So I uh um I saw you in the video uh-huh. with Hogan, and I was like, "If he's here in Tampa, I got to get him on the show." This guy's got so stuff cool, to talk man. about. Yeah, I was like, "This is great." Hey, yeah. uh, it's so funny that you're the. Usually, this happens with porn stars or somebody. I go, "Hey, you in Tampa? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You go on the show. You're the first guy I've ever done this to." So no, no. So uh, so you hung out with Hogan. That's when you meet Hulk Hogan. Hey, you never met him before, right? Dude, I had a bucket list of the celebrities I wanted to meet. For me, it's Michael Jordan, uh-huh. Mike Tyson. Well, well, there's four, actually. Walter Payton, who's not with us right. anymore. I never got to meet him. His dad was too young. And then Hulk Hogan, uh, Matt Tyson and Jordan. Hogan was the only childhood hero I had left that I hadn't met. Yeah. And I think I had mentioned it once on an Instagram story. So this guy that had a relationship with him, dude, come down to Tampa and introduce you to Hogan. Pretty cool. Oh, that's funny. It was wanna... awesome, man. It was so, awesome. so I saw that video and I was like, uh, yeah. So my thing was when I first moved here was mm-hmm. when I was a kid. I'm probably older than you. Uh, my thing was Hulk Hogan and Evil Knievel. Okay. And the day I moved back to Tampa, I ran into Evil Knievel, no who way. went on to be my neighbor for several years after that. Really? Yeah, because you meet these people when you're, you know, you watch when your kids are larger than life, they're action figures. They're not yeah. they're superheroes. Then you meet them and you're like, oh my God. Dude, that's uh, exactly what it was for me. Man. Yeah, it's pretty, like pretty little, amazing. I was like a little kid, man. I'm like, this is awesome. So, so uh, I also noticed that, and I think this is a pure sign of success. A lot of people hate you too. <laughs> you know, but that's, a, that's like, it's yeah. almost better. Yeah. So a lot of people don't like how I how I deliver the message, but but a lot of those people, dude, are never gonna like. It's not gonna matter for them anyway. So what I've learned about social media, I never hired like a marketing company or any of that shit. Oh, and yep. it, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. not out. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, I never hired a marketing company or anything like that for social. And I, in fact, when it really blew up, is when I just started walking around my house talking into my phone instead of. This whole podcast set up nicely edited views and these business takeaways. Yeah. Instead, I just started like to speak in my mind. Like a regular dude. Exactly. Yeah. And that's when it really skyrocketed. We just passed a quarter million followers yesterday. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. it's, I'm still trying to, I, it's, there's something attractive about mm-hmm. it uh, where you're like, uh, I want, most of these people are on yeah. trying to get followers and trying to do this. You're like, it's gar- garbage that I heard a million times. Yeah. But there's some about the way you presented it. I was like, this is a guy, first of all, He's a guy who did it. He's he's actually practicing what he preaches, and it, and it worked out. I so I thought you were teaching a, a seminar because I saw you with the, all the people. But yeah. So do these people, the followers that come out there, they gotta they gotta hit you up and ask you for advice. They all probably want to follow the same move. Yeah. So here here's the thing, man. So when I, I talk a lot about realizing 
that, hey, I wasn't really getting rich as a W-2, but I'm getting my rear end kissed. And you see how you used rear end there? Buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it was good. It. Exactly, Proud of you. Exactly. Um, and uh, th th there's a niche out there that originally I was targeting indirectly targeting, not, or not even on purpose targeting, but like the guy making a quarter million dollars, that's the tech sales guy or the insurance sales guy in corporate America that's doing awesome. Yeah. Thinking he's rich making 200 grand. That guy in his mid thirties, mid forties starts to realize you're not buying a yacht with, with that money right. and, you, and you still got to work till your sixties and save up money to retire. When you own your own company, sky's the limit on how much you can make, but more so than that, when you retire, you have a company to sell. Yeah, and that's that's such a distinction, brother. So, uh, as part of having the success that you have and the free mm -hmm. time, you gamble a lot. <laughs> and uh, where where do you prefer to gamble? Well, see that that's the damn thing, man. It, it, it's like I, I like to think it's my business acumen that people follow me for. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, me, me me making a reel at two in the morning from the casino, <laughs> talking about how I just. Uh, you know, do you um, lose as much as you say you lose? I, I was I was listening to you earlier talking yeah. about dildos with Steve Austin yeah. and, uh, <laughs> being violated. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I talked about violating the, the casino, yeah. all right, buddy. And I maybe have a couple drinks in me. I, I will talk about violating the casino. Right? Um, you you yeah. seem like uh, like I've seen you on on days where you said you lost a yeah. bunch, but mostly you're you're killing it. And I don't know what's exaggeration and what's not. No, I don't lie at all on that stuff. Um, what's interesting is no BS. Yeah, I didn't lose once in twenty. 2023 and i only lost twice in 2022 and i'm betting usually average between three or four grand a hand usually play four or five hours when i lose it's only for that night so i'll, I'll look at like here i'm at the tampa hard rock right, right. Now, right i came in wednesday i came in saturday if i lose one of the days that's not how i look at it. i look at it for the whole trip and i have not had a trip that i've lost on since since 2020 okay All and right. you're doing blackjack black exactly blackjack and and here's here's the thing guys okay so if you were going to go to the casino with a thousand bucks and you got that, which he does off, <laughs> yeah. go with a thousand bucks and let's say you're batting 25 or 50 bucks a hand okay? right. and you get it up to 1300 bucks. Most likely you're not going to stop. You're going to keep going. Right. Like a lot of people don't stop. Right. A, a lot of people don't. Yeah. You're trying to turn that thousand bucks into 5,000 or 10,000 and then they stop. Dude, I, I go with a quarter million dollars. Okay. Once I'm up 40 or 50 grand, I slow down immensely. And if I give a little bit of it back, then I stop. Right. So last night I was up 40 at one point, lost a couple hands, looked at my stuff. Okay, I'm still up 25. Stop. You know what I mean? And if I were to keep playing 250 grand till it turned into two and a half million, I would never win. Mm -hmm. But people with $1,000 try to turn it into 10 grand all the damn time. That's yeah. why they never win. Do you know how many times I've had this conversation with my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, listen, you made $300. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you went in with a thousand, you're up 30, you're 30, you have 1300, you made $300. Yep. Walk away. Yep. That's a win. Yep. Yeah. You too many people think that they're going to hit this big grand thing, 25,000 right. or something. And you're not going to do that on blackjack exactly. you may do that on a slot machine exactly. or something whatever yeah but once you put the time in take it well and they'll talk about okay the casino, if you play basic strategy blackjack and play it perfectly the casino still has an edge somewhere between one and two percent mm -hmm. i think okay but even if you're sitting there playing perfectly that that's not their real edge the real edge ain't that two percent their real edge is that they have more money than you yeah. that's the freaking <laughs> edge and you could see that money and the temptation the crystal ball calling you come on buddy come on little buddy and Look. they give you all the match the dealer and the this and that and all those other see, ones that dude, take, yeah I, if somebody starts playing that crap next to me on the table see i use crap yeah. Yeah. hey if someone starts using that doing that stuff to me at the table we got this place in chicago it's it's called rivers this little casino in um just plains illinois and i go to their high limit room and they have the damn side bets okay what you're talking about yeah and people forget they're playing blackjack because mm. they're just trying to look at the damn side bets the yeah. whole damn time. Yeah. And then I don't play them, right? So right. I'm sitting there betting two or three grand a hand. The guys next to me are playing $100 black chips. But then they keep telling me to make the side bets. And then I'll hear, I don't even pay attention. Then something will come up where I would have won the side bet. It's like a straight or something like right. that. And I hear him go, oh, oh, you see? <laughs> yeah. I go, dude, shut the <laughs> up, dude. But I don't like playing at local places. I like to have. Like, so anyway, my problem is, is that uh, I do OK money wise. So if I yeah. go buy a scratch off lottery ticket and win $20, I don't want to win 20. I'm doing it to get the 50 grand. Yeah. If I don't, it sits in my visor until I remember that I have it there. So that's yeah. the same way with blackjack. 
if I go, it's because I want to leave there up, you know, two grand or three grand or whatever. The only side bet that I would endorse, for, if that's your mindset, yeah. is the ones that have the progressive. Yeah, box. yeah. Because you can hit a yeah, big box. Exactly. Most side bets don't have that, but the ones that do, you could you could crush. Yeah, three card poker is good for that. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're, this is your first time here at the Hard Rock? No, it's my second time. The first time was during WrestleMania. Um, oh yeah. During COVID. COVID. Yeah. Which was a cool experience to be at an event like that during COVID with no one there. It's like a private WrestleMania party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. No, it was so. It's because I was a huge wrestling fan for a long time, and uh, wrestling WrestleMania finally came out. I didn't even go. It was COVID just ruined everything. Yeah, it made it terrible. Uh, yeah. So, um, is that why you were just a big wrestling fan? Yeah. No, not really. Oh. So, so, so when I well, when I was a kid, I was for yeah. sure, but I don't really pay attention to it now. But what was interesting is when I um when I got in with. So the only reason I even started going to Hard Rock is because I couldn't get out to the Bahamas during COVID. That's where uh, I usually gambled. Yeah. And my host there knew the host at hollywood florida hard rock hooks me up there next thing i know they're oh, this is awesome down here right? yeah. like we didn't even know this existed well Chicago. at that time they weren't even full there was no roulette or anything there at the time exactly yeah. dude but but it, it it becomes a good organization this is, this is like an experienced gambler talking right now and i'm, I'm kissing your guys asses a little bit lo <laughs> locally here um they it is a good company to get comps from if you're a high, a high roller because they have access to things, dude. Everything. Bro, I went to the – my brother is a big Miami Hurricanes fan, okay? My dad died um, in 2018 on uh, the anniversary of his death, the five-year anniversary of his death. We, we saw University of Miami is playing play Louisville. Right. Call my host, the pick. We get tickets to this game. Not only did we get tickets, we're in their damn 50-yard line suite, oh, and it was wow. the coolest experience. And yeah. me and my brother are like, Dude, this is awesome call to do this. Thing, this you know? So let me tell you what they did here. So they have the, the casino. They it started mm -hmm. out here as a bingo hall. Okay. Because they didn't have the the legality to uh, go ahead and make it a casino. So mm -hmm. they had slot machines, and the slot machines were based on uh, bingo patterns that ran. It was, you know, the odds had to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty awful, but it was the only thing that we had. And okay. it was, it was, it smelled like smoke. Okay. It was bad. And they, over the years, have turned that place into one building, two buildings, three buildings, parking garages. I mean, what it is now, yeah. preparing for the day that everything was legal and they could do it now. We have sports betting. Okay. Yeah, I have seen it from the bottom uh, all the way up to the top. So yeah. They build a 2,000-seat theater, 2,000 seats, for mostly comp tickets, and are, and are pulling in. They're pulling artists out of arenas. They're getting Rod Stewart to play a 2,000 seater, yeah, but yeah. still paying him five hundred thousand wow. dollars a night to do it. They're getting all the comedy shows. They're getting all the so yes. Between here and Hollywood, they get you get comp for everything because they got to walk past the damn tables and they assume they're gonna see how I'm a big Metallica fan. Yeah, I, I saw a private show of Metallica, not a private show, but I think they hold six thousand there. I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm watching Metallica in a six thousand person theater that's built for like comedy shows. Right, this is yeah. awesome because they have the money to. It's nuts. bring these big bands in they'll pay the same thing that the arena is paying it and you're getting to see it and then they do it mostly to cater to their to their high rollers you know that's their whales so you guys will appreciate this story for like the gambling stuff yeah. right so, so seminal hard rock i don't know if you guys know this they bought the mirage from mgm the yeah. mirage on las vegas boulevard okay so my host there starts telling me hey we could get you comps at places in vegas now boom I go, oh, dude, I'm not going to stay at the Mirage. No one goes there anymore. He goes, we, <laughs> just, we got these villas, though, that are the best thing on the strip. You got to check them out. I go there, and he was right. It was like I was in, like, uh, you ever go to, like, Versailles in Paris, King, yeah. King Louis' house? It was yeah, like yeah, walking yeah. into King <laughs> Louis' mansion. <laughs> like, this is awesome, bro. It was so cool. But Mirage doesn't have any players right now because they're transitioning it to a hard rock, okay? Yeah. So they're high rollers that were part of MGM or all over at Aria. They, they just don't have anything going on there. Well, here I am betting how I bet. I'm looking around the casino. They do not have a big uh, floor there at the casino. So you can really see what's going on. Everyone's betting like $10 a hand, $25 a yeah. hand. I end up taking them for 90 grand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I love it. But I'm coming in and out. So I'm doing like 10 minutes. I win 12 grand. Stop. Come back an hour later. Win eight grand. Stop. So they're going to kind of piss. I, I don't think they're going to piss them because I'm tipping the hell out of them. Right, so I don't right. see this. Well, I go to check out. I get a call from my casino host the next day. He goes, ah, dude. We got you marked it as, as an advantage player now. What? Uh, you think you're counting? Could well, you win? Well, that's what I thought. I go, am I car you think I'm card counted? I go, dude, you, you competed consistently the same amount. I don't know why they're saying this. And honestly, bro, because it's still the more. I go, you guys know you. Look at the other hard rocks. I don't, I don't count cards. Yeah. Well, uh, they still have the old Mirage MGM staff, even though it's part of Hard Rock. They haven't integrated systems yet. Yeah. Thank God, because I don't want to be an advantage player right down here. No one's going to let me gamble. Yeah. But um, anyway, they... they I, I think they would never admit this. I think it's because they lost money that night at the casino. <laughs> Honestly, I, people are like, dude, 90 grand, that's nothing to them. 
BS is at this stage, yeah. at this stage in the in the uh, casino at the Mirage, yeah, bro, it, it was like in November. I'm looking around. There's maybe like 40 other people in the whole place gambling. I go, they lost money. Yeah. No, there's, <laughs> that guy lost 300. That person won, lost 60. That person lost 24. Oh, that's me. funny. It didn't add up You're the one grand. guy left with 90 grand. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, so they go, that guy ain't coming back. I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is John Sarasani here. How many? What do we got on followers now? How many now? I just crossed a quarter million, Mike, and I got to tell you, man, just like your Instagram, you could. I, if you're a professional bro i could look at your instagram and i see that it's real it's legit yeah versus these other uh ha, uh air quote uh influencers dude you don't have eight hundred thousand followers dude you're no. and, and you did not get nine thousand likes on that post your content is terrible <laughs> you, you bought all these followers pal i eat so so i have a hundred thousand or so on twitter nice and i but i'll be honest with you there's a there's so many fake ones on there i didn't do it yeah people are like people will call me out on there like you got fake but yeah I, i'll give you ten thousand dollars if you can prove in any capacity that i ever bought a follower anywhere right i couldn't care less i don't monetize my social media yeah. i do it as a compliment to the show so that you can follow the show after cool. it's over i'm not trying to make they, they i mean the people that are making money off of of youtube and, and all that stuff they make good money but these people that ha that are just at the basic they, i don't know what you think you're not getting paid for yeah. You're, you're making a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there. That is, that's nothing to. Well, and, and people do it to humiliate you. So, right. So somebody did that. To they working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> somebody did that to probably a hater of you sends a bunch of bots to your account and, and. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, I get you. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of worried. Someone, because what happened on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago, somebody sent a bunch of bots uh, to report it for breaking community standards. Uh -huh. And I got my account disabled for two days because mm. it screwed up the algorithm, the artificial intelligence at Instagram assume that okay with all these reports yeah you know what i mean um so i do get a little worried because I, I pride myself on being real being genuine if somebody went out of their way to send me a bunch of fake followers and my stuff like loaded up a half million in one day or something i would be so damn pissed yeah man, because yeah. it's it's someone doing it for that reason but at least i have enough traction <laughs> after a week people are like oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you, you know? what's the end goal for you uh with the stuff what do you what do you want to do from here on out <clears throat> there isn't really one man so so um i was really really fortunate uh to to have um been in the situation i was in you know what i mean i, I left that job in corporate america and i was hoping to make 300 grand one day i was really looking more towards the freedom right I ended up building that company um where i was making and personally making millions each year and then when private equity bought it it, it, it was a game changer for my family and my kids and my grandkids and everything. So um, rather than trying to monetize this stupid stuff with, you know, having these dinners and trying to make a couple grand here, a couple grand yeah. there, I like charge what the dinner is going to cost me <laughs> and, and, and just want to fill the room. And there's enough people to like hearing me talk. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that, man. And it'll probably get bigger over the next year or two, bro. But um, for now, uh, there's not a monetization effort. You're, you're inspirational the way you do things. Cause it's just, you want a real guy talking to you. You yeah. want it, you want it to be real. You, you talk about when things are good, when things are bad yeah. and uh, it's entertaining also, which is, which is a key of, of uh, having success to be something that people like. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I got to meet you. I'm glad this all aligned yeah and worked too, out that man. you came out here well i appreciate you reaching out to me man and i i'm really trying to do like yeah i was like i said i was listening to your show on the way over here and you guys touched on something with uh with the fed and all stuff yeah I, i've made a couple points about that on my show and it, it, it's interesting you know you got this platform right right so my platform was built really just on gambling and business acumen but now that the platform's there i will give my personal feelings on stuff just like that it's, sure hey Hey, the same the 90s guys we, yeah. we were allowed to do cocaine you, you're not right it, it, it's like in the 80s when you know everyone in the 60s oh gosh you sex got ruined for you guys you got to wear condoms now because of aids yeah all right, right. well we, we did that to cocaine i'm sorry you're, you're out <laughs> <laughs> leave me out on this one but, but but it's just kind of cool where you know better than anyone like once once you have that platform yeah people actually give a heck what, yeah. you, what you say sometimes yeah, that was the one word you could say <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, hey what is you have kids yeah, I, got How a, old? I have a, uh, I raise them both. Um, I'm a single dad. I have a 15 year old and a 20 year old. You're a single dad? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, yeah. divorced or? Yeah, so I was married um, to my daughter's uh, mom and, um, you know, it's, it's, we have a great relationship or whatever. Okay. My daughter had gone between us and my son, I was never married to his mom. And uh, when he was 10, we decided to make the, just because he was getting his boy and stuff, uh, decided to have him live with me. And uh, I'll tell you what, man. I go from skipping to work, being this multi-millionaire, dating whoever I want. I'm living at the Trump Tower, walking down the street, whistling, and 
Then I got a fourth grader move in with me. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll change different. things real quick. Yeah. It, you know what? It, it made me leave. It made me leave the city, bro. Anyone that knows Chicago, the Trump Tower is right in the middle of the action. Yeah. Man. It's right there, bro. And uh, I decided to go out to the suburbs, which is kind of maybe kind of saved my life a little bit sure you know I mean? sure so. i i have uh, an 18 year old son who's a senior in high school this year he's going okay. away to college and you know thankfully he's not a drug guy i mean he'll smoke yeah. weed or whatever that's fine but i i mean i'm petrified of these kids trying drugs for the first time like most of us did in college yeah. and dying the first time they try drugs i mean it's insane well bro you know the, the fentanyl is one thing right and then it's even the stuff that's legitimately how it was supposed to be i mean you see yeah. you seen that thing on uh netflix yet with uh matthew broderick the, yeah yeah, oh, the, yeah, the yeah, the here, yeah yeah what a crap show it, it, crazy it, it, if, if 50 percent of that's true on how it went down that's yeah. terrible well the fact that it's on netflix and it hasn't been taken down means most of it's true because yeah. they can't they would stop it if they could well and i that show really resonated because that the way they depicted the, the female sales reps uh -huh. yeah that was like my era coming out of college oh, all yeah. the cute girls were, we're getting those jobs 100 percent. they're all making 300 grand yep. and they're a lot of them are oh this girl's a cheerleader at usc this girl played volleyball at northwestern they're taking those jobs instead of working at like Deloitte or Accenture yeah. are getting paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, oh, when they changed all those rules, that screwed it up for everybody. I used to live yeah. in a neighborhood that all, everybody but me was a drug rep in the neighborhood. And then when they changed those laws, everybody moved out and sold their house. Yeah. It was, changed their lives. Switch it up. You, the laws about like incenting the doctors and yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 Like, that, that screwed everything up for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, dude, it's a pleasure to meet you. I Appreciate hope you enjoy it. the rest. When are you going back? When are you leaving? We're leaving Saturday, man. So, uh, hey, I'm up. I'm up about 26 grand at the Hard Rock <laughs> right nice. now. Let's keep it that way and uh, keep this streak alive, man. And if you do, do you mind me plugging my stuff? No. No, no plug uh, away. So at John Sarasani, J O H N C E R A S A N I is my Instagram. I'm also on TikTok. Um, I have a podcast called 2000% Raise. And you can also check out everything at 2000%Raise.com. Now, you travel with these two guys? Or did you pick them up at the hard my guys, <laughs> man. You know, listen, dude, both of these guys, I, I, it, here, here's the power of social media. Man. Yeah. Okay. A, I got to meet Hulk Hogan yesterday uh -huh. on social media. That would never would have happened um but b you, you got especially guys like this but not only only not only the younger guys but the people of all ages they want to help and, and be part of things that are going on mike just how you reach up to the, yeah. be on your damn show yeah this is cool but be a part of this thing so whatever i'm doing is working man and uh that wasn't really the plan and it's kind of it's at that point now which you, you know you probably get recognized every time you leave your house and that's starting to happen for me which is a really cool experience good good for you yeah i bet you get a lot of girls <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I, dude, so see i got so many haters so i, I gotta be careful i because i'll look at my dms right and some of them just like look like that's it's almost a, too good to be a, true a, yeah. i'm like oh, dude someone set this girl up they're, they're gonna screenshot yeah. this they're gonna screenshot this yeah you gotta be careful here's here's how i know because yeah. uh evidently you went to the front door and one of my neighbors helped you out okay and she's like uh there's a very tall, handsome man trying to find you. She texted me. I was like, I, now, now you mix in the rest of it. You mix it yeah. on top of me. You're a good looking guy. You, you got great personality. And then on top of that, you also got money and you're out there gambling. It must, you must have to fight it off. Brother, they're, they're, everyone in Tampa has been trying to tell me to stick around for this pirate party. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude, and I guess Burt Kreischer is the, yeah. uh, yeah, me and him follow each other. We talk sometimes. I didn't know he's in town. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he was actually flying in this morning. We had him on the show at 730 this morning. Oh, did you? Oh, he's one of my best friends. We've been no friends way. for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah, uh, he uh he's coming in as the grand marshal but listen as your friend i will tell you don't go anywhere near there okay it's the furthest place you want to be uh but they will where you want to be is the hard rock afterwards okay that's where it'll fill up and that's where the good stuff will be i think i'm gonna get out of town as yeah. planned. <laughs> I'm, I'm over it i'll, I'll, I'll stay maybe to hang out with bird would be the yeah. only reason but... yeah Bert, Bert, bert's going tonight to, well i'll tell you off the air yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. i'll tell you off the air all yeah. right good to know. john great to meet you man awesome this go follow great. john on instagram it's also up in our stories if you need to find the uh the tag to go do that we'll take a break hey cheese is up next to mike out the show Uh, in the studio with us now is Chef Jason Miller from uh, Melting Pot Social, which is downtown Tampa. How long have you guys been there? Uh, we've been there. Here, we get right up on that mic. There. Uh, we've been good. there for about a year and a half. Okay. And it's the same concept as a regular melting pot that you go to or what? Oh, no. no. Oh. Oh, oh. No, no. How dare you? No, no, no. No, it's, it's, uh, it's a complete uh, departure from the traditional melting pot we we still have the exceptional cheese and chocolate fondues right but it's all packaged in a completely different more whimsical way oh okay all right i like whimsical yeah and uh, i brought some of it 
today so you can see and taste it uh, and experience for yourself the what is melting pot social compared to the traditional melting pot. So I, I'll tell you right now, Fatty's on a diet and I can't eat it. So I brought my <laughs> wife in to eat it and she made noises that I've never made her make before. <laughs> I can tell you that uh, it is a nice uh, board that has what I assume are rice crispy uh fruity pebbles treats uh right. then there's pretzels and cake and uh marshmallows and brownies and all that and of course a flaming lit of uh, uh kettle of chocolate yeah. that you can dip all that stuff in right carmen is orgasmic for you uh-huh. yeah yeah it's good stuff huh? oh and you don't even see the best thing what what is it now- they brought me something special well hold on what is, and what is all that stuff just other stuff that can go with it that's all the stuff that you can put in your chocolate fondue and there's everything there and this is the same like thing what like no i can't see everything bacon. Nuts. you've got bacon, bacon yeah. peanut butter uh cookie dough gummy bears heat bar pieces nuts. coconut nuts caramel marshmallow yeah that's yeah. the way to go whatever you like in your chocolate yeah hey. so so uh you go there and it's the same kind of way where you're sitting in a in a cute little booth oh no a little table or no, what do you got this is this is a a much uh this is a completely different type of uh dining room no i this, have to go this is much lighter colors okay uh different textures different feel it's a lot more uh cocktail forward so we have a lot of bar area a lot of tables dining but we also have everything from burgers to flatbreads main entrees such as our miso crunch salmon right we have uh burgers i mentioned that already that's Soup. right so i get it so you got a good array of food got everything that you yeah. can order and then you can have this fun stuff that you can do as well and yeah. then cocktails so you can stay there and hang out for a while we've got a, a slew of, of craft cocktails uh local beers uh wine you name it plus all the cheese and chocolate fondue that you could possibly imagine beautiful guy it's it, it, you know how this is the strongest test I've had so far, I think, uh, to being on a diet is having it sit so close to me. Now, how uh, I know you're ready to pounce on it. I know. I've been sitting here waiting for us to come back. Now, what did Brooke have Torture. You? So, I got a couple things. One of the things I can actually eat. Right. And it is a cookie souffle. Ooh, what is a cookie souffle? So, it's... A- it's delicious. Like a is what giant it is. cookie. Yeah, in the- in the- but why is it... One of- why can you eat that? Because it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> she brought it to me. <laughs> you dummy. You're like uh you're like half touching everything else. Like all of a sudden I thought that one was gonna be healthy for you. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Listen, listen, I, you're you're already Wawa uh Carmen. You might as well just fire it up today. Yeah. You and, can get a day. Yeah, exactly. I've been counting my macros and I have not cheated right. this whole time. You're what, allowed to cheat. Yeah, it's twenty six days. I'm solid. Yeah, yeah. And we still got I mean, I wouldn't say solid, but you know what I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah. More yeah. than a little yeah but anyway and we still have some time before the cruise so today will be my cheat day i'm fine i'm fine with it right? all out okay, yeah, yeah. Right. now brooke uh carmen assumed that you were going to bring in cheese and uh and meat and all that stuff so um she wanted to bring stuff she was like do you think if i bring my own stuff i could dip it in the cheese and i go i'm sure you can i didn't want you guys to be offended yeah <laughs> like, nope. yeah no uh, not so so the you know gro- me 20 years like right so the gross stuff that she brought in today was pickles for I don't cheese. know how. Now, now, as a chef, have you ever had pickles and cheese? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That doesn't sound right to me. What about pickles and chocolate? Me, and savory. Yeah, That's yeah. Will that. you dip it in the chocolate? One hundred percent. Have you never had pickles on a cheeseburger? Yes, like, but as an accent to something more delicious, not as a main deal. Yeah, it's not like it's not like we're putting, uh, you know, chocolate in um, in Sprite. It's not. I mean, I get it. It goes together, but. All right, well, you and you want to try the pickle and the chocolate? Yeah, 100%. Go ahead. Can I start it off with that, and then I'll move on to the more delicious stuff? You guys want to try this stuff? Spanish? Geo? Dig it, dig it. I got a whole whole plate over here. Joe, of course. Galvin's got one over there, too. Um, Feel free to dig in. Now, this is uh, Melting Pot Social. They're in downtown Tampa, and uh, it's it's an entirely different concept than what you originally thought and you can go out there and grab some drinks and eat some great food and then dive straight into this chocolate fondue and I, i'll be honest I, I dip a human hand in there well you're going yeah. full bore huh wow. oh yeah you dip the whole thing oh my god she is not like, messing around i want the whole thing covered never mind you chad no <laughs> more chocolate will fix that <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me <laughs> uh, you, you just have to learn how to, how to uh, spin it faster oh yeah. I think Chef found a new dipper. <laughs> what if yeah. if this becomes a big hit, chocolate pickles? You guys may be opening up a, a truck at the fair next year. This, gotta... this, this may be our Valentine's fondue. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, oh, that's the thing. You can get your own fondue. So, like, if Carmen doesn't want to share her pickles with 
her boyfriend right. or with you, she can have her own chocolate. Oh, That's I what's get... unique about Melting Pot Social, that you can order your own cheese and your own dippers and your own chocolate. That's delicious. How are you, How is it delicious? I'm not, I'll Do you want to try right. it, Chef? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, get yourself a chocolate gherkin. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. I'm telling you. But we brought Carmen a little Valentine's Day gift, too. What did you? Why did she get gifts? Because this is about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's always about you. Today, Look, it's about Carmen. That's fine. I'll, I'll let her have one day. Carmen, by the way, in Spanish, tomorrow morning, will be at McDitton's for the Gatsby pregame. Go out there and get a, uh, a neutral, get some free breakfast. Olivero's uh, broadcasting from 9 to 1. What is that? What is that box? You so got a melting pot box? I can do that home now. Watch out, Chad. Valentine's Day treats. (laughs) And we also have a a little something for her so she can come back to Melting Pot Social with Chad and not with you. Oh, hey, look. This is the best day ever. Brooke, I'm going to be honest with you. Of all people that you should have brought that gift to, Carmen is the right one (laughs) because she will consistently in her house keep trying to melt things and dip (laughs) things into it. For the rest of her life, Pickles. I guarantee you. Look, Pickles, I'll send you guys a list onions. of things you can add to the menu. <laughs> uh, Melting Pot Social downtown uh, Tampa. Go check them out. You can find them online at Melting Pot Social Tampa. I just linked it up to our Instagram with a picture of the delicious food that they brought in here today. Very nice to uh, to meet you. Thank you so much for coming in. And listen, pickles yeah. and pickles and chocolate. Good, right? The Carmen. Ask it's for the really Carmen good. when you roll in there. Yeah. You go into Melting Pot Social, ask for, uh, ask for the Carmen. They'll bring you a little side of pickles. Yeah, you're going to get